And All right, welcome back, everyone. Great to be with you on this Saturday, beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Decatur, North Dakota. Bright sunshine, blue sky. Conference championship on the line. Two teams that uh, are the only two teams that's ever won in North Star Athletic Association Championship. Dickinson State, State University eight in a row. Valley City won the first two. So these two teams, teams know what championship years. football is all about in the, in the North Star in their Main meeting Hall. today. Now Dickinson, of course, has the lead at uh, six in Old Valley City at five and Both these teams have a game remaining next week. So a win today by Dickinson would secure their ninth row. And a loss by Dickinson would maybe mean and share the conference crowd with Dickinson Valley and Golden State Lab and Waldorf. Meeting Valley City State next week. But we'll let the 40 to 40, 30 to 30, 20 to 20, 10 to 10, goal line to goal line decide what's going to happen here today as far as the championship. And two evenly matched Dickens State, one of their top games of the year in Valley City State. And back at the end of September, they defeated the Vikings. So Jimmy Dow looking forward to what should be a great game. Usually is when Dickinson and Valley City State. We couldn't order better weather, about 49, 50 degrees. Just a a light wind and again uh, you look at the flag hardly moving and you don't see that very much at this time of the year and here I thought Jim I had missed the coin flip I had so I'm going to let you talk about the game and I'll watch the coin flip and two very talented defensive football teams uh, Dickinson State and Valley City State both uh, allowing less than 20 points per ball game so a couple of teams ranked in the top 20 on the defensive scoring side of things Dickinson State scoring A very efficient offense, but they rely on their defense to keep them in the ball game. <laughs> well, Dickinson State, Jim, giving up 14.6 points per ball game. Valley City at 19, like you alluded to. So the Hawks, again, very stingy. Valley City, pretty stingy uh, coming into this ball game today. The difference really in these two teams lies in offense and the scoring ability of Dickinson State, which is almost uh, uh, 20 points more than Valley City scores the game. Valley City deferred. They won the coin toss, so they'll kick off. They elected to kick off, and uh, Dickinson State will receive the football. Hunter goes back deep to receive for Dickinson State, and Darian Brown also back deep to receive. Hawks in their blue pants, blue jerseys, Valley City all white, silver helmets for the Hawks, red helmets for the Vankings. It's Senior Day, Booster Awards Day, all kinds of things going on. And Mother Nature rewarded us with a beautiful day with temperatures in the 50s, just a light southwest breeze at between 5 and 10 miles per hour. And it could be a good weekend for the Blue Hawks because the Blue Hawk cross-country team yesterday swept the North Star Athletic Association meet. The men won by a single point, the women won by 11, so it could be a three-conference title weekend for the Hawks. Kick's going to sail down to Hunter. He takes it at the 2, brings it back to the 5, the 10. Cuts outside at the 15, breaks the tackle at the 20, and fights his way out to about the 25-yard line. So 
That's where Dickinson State will get their first offensive possession of the football game as they take over at their own 25-yard line. And of course, the first time around, Dickinson State ran the football extremely well. Braden Zuroff had around 180 yards in that ball game in Valley City. And if he can put together a, a game similar to that, he can go over the 1,000-yard mark. Needs, I believe, 169 yards to get to the 1,000-yard mark for the Hawks. They're off with a total of 831 yards rushing on the season for Dickinson State. Will Madler, the offensive player of the week at quarterback, they're off to his right. And uh, guess where they go right away to Zuroff. He goes right up the middle out to about the 30-yard line, 29-30. So let's give Zuroff a pickup on the play of four, and it'll bring up a second down and six for Dickinson State at their own 29. Again, the Hawks line up quickly. Sickler. And Bowden will come out wide to the near side. Shepard wide to the far side. Again, Brantley and Schumacher, your tight ends, we'll see them all afternoon long. Sometimes both in there, sometimes not. They put Zuroff in motion right to left, and then he comes back in the shotgun formation right beside the quarterback, Will Madler. They faked him. They got the pass off to Bowden, and Bowden had it on the hands but kind of behind him a little bit and couldn't pull it in, so it goes incomplete. So it'll bring up a third down and six situation. Just a little quick slant to Bowden that time, and Madler put it on his back hip, and Bowden unable to come up with the catch as Schumacher will check into the ball game on this third down. That leaves uh, Shepard. Cam Shepard will check out of the ball game as Dickinson State and Valley City State going out of here just underway. 45 seconds into the ball game, Dickinson State looking at a third and six at their own 29. Shepard has left the ball game. Schumacher, the man who took his spot in motion, right to left. Madler back to pass all kinds of time. Across the middle, he's got his receiver out there. That's Bowden. He's got it at the 43-yard line. And that'll be a pickup of 14. And Bowden comes up with the catch. And it'll be a first and 10 for the State. Just a little curl pattern for Bowden. And as soon as he turned around, the pass was right between the numbers. A good throw that time by Madler. And it, Good catch by Bowden, and the Blue Hawks with the first down out across the 40-yard line. First and 10 at the 43. Bowden and Sickler again right below us. Come twins near side. They'll go tight inside with Dickinson State, and they leave the fullback kind of as a lead blocker out of that shotgun formation. Lone caught by Mather right up the middle to Zuroff. He breaks the tackle at the 45, slides out to the 47, and that'll be a pickup for Zuroff of about four more yards, and it'll bring up a second down, and it'll bring up second and six for Dickinson State. Well, the key for Dickinson State offensively, and they've done it well this year, is to stay in front of the sticks and not get penalties, not get tackles for losses, and they've been extremely well on that side of things for the offense. Again, they'll put Brantley and Schumacher tight ends, both one in the right slot, one in the left slot, go shot the gun formation. Far side wide out, near side wide out, Sickler. They go right back to Zuroff, and Zuroff breaks a tackle at the 47, fights his way out to the 49-yard line, and Zuroff will pick up two more yards on the play, and it'll bring up a third down and four for Dickinson State at their own 49-yard line. Well, the one thing with both tight ends with the Dickinson State, both Brantley and Schumacher, good blockers, but good pass receivers as well. Dickinson State looking at third and four at their own 49-yard line. Again, Zuroff to the left of Mather this time. They put the fullback at the slot position. Bowden goes in motion, joins Shepard in the twin stack on the left hash mark. Back to pass to go out of the backfield. They got it out there. Zuroff wide open, breaks the tackle at the 40, and fights his way down to the 38-yard line. So they put Zuroff out of the backfield. And that will be a 13-yard catch and run for Braden Zuroff. Zuroff just goes into the flat on the left side of the formation where the Blue Hawks had the twin receivers and just kind of cleared things out. And Zuroff came underneath into the flat, made the catch, uh, broke a tackle at about the 45, got the first down inside the 40 at the 38-yard line for the Hawks. So first down and 10 for Dickinson State at the BSU 38-yard line. Twin set near side, Shepard solo in front of the Valley City State bench. Madler comes up to the center, shouts out signals, puts Zuroff to his right. Shotgun formation again, ready to go to work. Is Zuroff, nope, they fake it to him. They got Shepard, did he hang on to it? Yes, he did. 
Nice catch by Shepard at the 24 yard line. And that'll be a pickup on the play of 14 and another first down for Dickinson State. And Shepard did a nice job of sealing the defensive back, Emmanuel Spahi, and was able to shield him from the football, made the catch, and then Spahi got the tackle right at the 25 yard line. So good job that time by Shepard to keep the defensive back away from the football. Ox moving down to the south end on the left hash mark. Sunshine drenching the, the BAC here in Dickinson. Twin set right side. Long count again by Madler. Little delay. Fakes it. Tucks it. He's going to run with it. He's got some room. Fights his way all the way inside the 20 down to about the 17-yard line. That's a good pickup on first down for Madler, a pickup of seven on the play. And that's part of Madler's game that we haven't seen a lot this year because the running game's gone extremely well with both Braden Zeroff and Darian Brown. Most of the time, uh, Madler's running comes in the scramble position and able to catch up yardage that time. Just a quick quarterback draw that time for Madler and gets a good gain on first down. Ninth play of the drive for Dickinson State. Second down and four at the 17. They go to Zeroff. He slips one tackle, keeps his feet all the way inside the 10. What an effort by Zuroff. They'll put it down at about the 10. He bounced to about the 9, but Zuroff give him 7 yards on the play. Great effort by Zuroff. He's carried it four times now for 17 yards. Fifth first down for Dickinson State. First and goal at the 10. Zuroff was hit right at the line of scrimmage, but bounced off the tackler there and was able to get free. Got first down yardage, and it'll be first and goal right at the 10 for Dickinson State. Ox again driving. This began back at their own 25. Mather has them set. Zeroff to his left. Brantley in the backfield. They go to Zeroff. He breaks inside. Cuts to the outside. He's at the 5. Breaks again with the cut. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. No penalty flag. What a run by Brain Zeroff. An in, cut out. Zig down the half mark at the 2. Cut to the blue. And he's into the end zone. A 10-yard run for Braden Zeroff. A good patient run that time by Zeroff as he was supposed to go right up the middle. But then he saw the opening to the left side and just bounced it out to the outside and got to the edge. And... Dive in, dives into the end zone to avoid the tackler and the Blue Hawks a nice five and a half minute drive to put points on the board on their initial possession something they've done extremely well this season PAT attempt up and coming for Dickinson State Chase Miller in kick is up looks good did it split the uprights it did it is good so Dickinson State on the board first here at the back as they lead Valley City State by a score of seven to nothing on the CHI St. Alexia South scoreboard 10 plays, 75 yards, scores comes with 9, 26 left to go. First quarter, back with the Hawks kickoff to Valley City. We'll do it in 30 seconds. Rivera's more than a bank. We're a group of people in the business of helping communities forge on. At the counter, we offer convenience so the day can forge on. In the thick of the hall, we protect your peace of mind so the season can forge on. And around the table, we make room for everyone so life can forge on. We're more than a bank. We're your path ahead. Bravera, forge your path. All right, thank you much. As we come back, 9.26 left to go. Just an update uh, for the listeners with us here. Fourth quarter now, Dickinson Trinity leading Valva 31-20. to High end in for end kick. Short kick going to carry down to the 12. Bobbled there and picked up there, then missed there. A tackle and then out to about the 20-yard line. He's a return man for Belling City. Let's see if we can get a number. He reached down and bobbled it and then tried to bring it back up again. But it'll be a short return of about 10 yards, and Valley City State will go to work their first offensive series of the day, and again, they'll go to work at their own 20-yard line. I believe that was Xavier Westbrook, a freshman wideout for Valley on the return there. Got flags down, though, so let's hang on now. The flag way back at the 47-yard line of Valley City. Not quite sure what the call was. Personal foul against Dickinson State. Okay, personal foul Dickinson State. So they'll go out to the 35. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. And I didn't catch the number for the first that follow was on. The official Andrew Fisher, our referee. Let's see. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Okay, unsportsmanlike conduct. Okay. So 35 is where they will go to work, Valley City. After the penalty, that brings up a first and 10. So first and 10 for the Vikings. Down nine or seven to nothing here. But 921 left to play. Let's see who goes at the start at quarterback. If we've got Chambers or Thorsgaard. Looks like Chambers. 
They'll play two quarterbacks all day long, so we'll watch for that. There's that little pump fake, and that's going straight ahead and out to about the 41-yard line, a pickup of about six on the play. They say five, and that'll be chambered, just that quarterback draw. They like to do that a lot. They'll run that a lot that play, so it'll bring up a second and five at the 40 for Valley City. That's something Coach Stanton talked about on Cotton with the coaches this morning as uh, both the quarterbacks Chambers and Thorsgaard like to run the football and they push it all the way out to the 42 yard line so it'll be a second down and three. Pretty good spot it looked like about the 40 maybe 41 and the spot goes down at the 42 so Chambers again puts a running back uh, right next to him and that of course is Bice he's a good one back to pass there's that day draw again and this time nothing doing Matt Anderson there also coming up number 96 Austin Dennis and no go there a walk on the play back to the 40 so that'll be a loss of two yards for Chambers. And uh, good experience up front for Dickinson State. Austin Dennis and Drew Mather, both seniors, and Wyatt, and, or rather Matt Anderson, a junior. So good experience up front. And Drew Mather, of course, an All-American. And Anderson, an all-conference player from a year ago. So to bring up a third down and five, the ball spotted again at the Valley City 40-yard line. Chambers out of the shotgun. Keeps Bice in there. Looked out in the flat. Throws it up high. Nice catch. And a reception at the 48-yard line. It'll be hauled in that time by Uchino, and he'll pick up a total on the play from the 40 the to the 48 and 8-yard reception and a first down for Valley City. And on the tackle, Cal Lundy. So a nice job by Uchino to go up the pass a little bit high, but he went up and got it and came down with the first down. Again, Chamber puts the running back. Bice to his left. Bice will uh, move to this left side. They put the man in motion quickly to the near side. There's that little handoff straight ahead. Bice has got positive yardage from the 48 to the 47. That'll be a pickup of five on the play for Bice to bring up a second down and five for Valley City. Well, so far, Valley City State's doing what Dickinson stayed on their initial possession, just uh, get to five, six yards of crack and move the football downfield. They've got their second first down into Blue Hawk territory now at the 47-yard line. So the Vikings will set. Chambers will bark out those signals going wide to the far side. It'll be Amagapo. So Amagapo will go wide to the far side. Bice will stay in the backfield. Long count. There's a handoff again. Straight ahead. Close to first down yardage. Near the 47 or make it the 43. Be a little bit shy. Let's get the number on the camera and see if that was Bice. It looks like Bice. And I believe that's who it was. Yep. Bice will pick up four on the play. And it will bring up a third down and one for Valley City at the 38 of Dickinson State. Now they're going to be about a half yard short of first down yardage as the referee came and gave it a good look and said third down. Valley City State making some changes. Dickinson State has a chance to match it defensively, so they'll run people in and out. Play clock under 10 seconds. Chambers will go to work with Bice to his right. They'll put two guys in the slot, the tight end and the slot back. So third and a yard at the 38. There's the handoff uh, straight ahead, and that'll be enough for a first down. No handoff, excuse me. That was just Chambers keeping it, and he goes for a pickup from the uh, 30... Uh, 43-yard line to the 40-yard line. No, I believe that was Thorsgaard. No, was it five? Number five in there. Okay. No, okay. So Thorsgaard in there. So that'll be a pickup of five on the play. Second first down for Valley City and first and ten for the Vikings. So Thorsgaard again works that offensive unit. Bice in the backfield. So Bice will come up to the uh, spot behind him. Might be pistol. Let's see if he shifts into the shotgun. Nope, they'll go pistol this time. Twins left. Solo right. Long count. Quick swing out, out in the flat, and uh, missing a tackle out in the flat, and another tackle, and finally missing another tackle. Great effort by number 29, about four tackles missed by Dickinson State, and coming up with the catch and run, Yushino, and that was a pretty catch and run by Yushino, a nine-yard pickup on the play. Looked like he was going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage, but able to step sideways away from the away from the defender and then got a little help as a couple of white jerseys came over and made a couple of nice blocks and got a nine yard gain on that just little swing pass to the wide receiver Yoshino. Second and one now for Valley City State. The ball at the Dickinson State 31 yard line. Again Thorsgaard will work at quarterback. We had Chambers but it's been Thorsgaard all the way on this drive. Back to pass. Thorsgaard got some time got some pressure scrambling He'll throw it up and he'll throw it well over the top of everybody. 
chance on third or second and one just to take a shot downfield, and they tried. It wasn't successful. Two of three now for 17 yards for fourth guard, and it'll bring up a third and one. So we'll bring up third down and one. Valley City breaks the huddle. Thor's guard, Law buys Lonesome. Let's see if they run that quarterback draw. They like to do it. Yep, here we go again. There's the tuck. There's the turn, and it'll be brought down by Lundy, but not before. He'll pick up four yards on the play, and that will be enough for a first time. They just spread the defense out that time, and Thor's guard just put the foot down and went to the left side and got a nice gain on, on third and short to get inside the 30-yard line. Well, first down and 10, so the Vikings continue to move, trailing 7 to nothing. four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Valley City moving to the north end. Again, Thor's guard going to work against this Dickinson State defense. Long count. He'll drop straight back a little inside screen that time. And a little pickup on the play, about two, maybe three yards. 27, the line of scrimmage will put it just shy of the 24. We'll call it a three-yard reception that time. Three of four now for 20 yards passing for Thor's guard in the football game. Yoshino just ran a little court, a little wide receiver screen, and Dickinson State covered it up well, just a short gain on that first down play. 11th play of the drive for Valley City. Remember, Dickinson State's first possession, 10 plays, 75 yards, and a touchdown. Vikings have taken six minutes off the clock. Yeah. Dickinson State took off five and a half. Valley City's taken off six. Quick first quarter. Again, Dickinson State ready to go to work. There's the snap for Valley City ready to go to work. They go out in the flat, and there's Ushima again, wide open near the marker. In fact, inside the marker at the 15-yard line. So that'll be a nine-yard reception. Just little pick and pop. And Valley City's been very successful at that. As that goes for nine yards. And the 12th play of the drive upcoming, third first down for the Vikings. Yoshino just found a little pocket in the zone and just sat down and Thor's guard that time just put it right on the numbers and a first down for Valley City State as the clock down to 240 left here in the first quarter. Hawks make some shifts defensively. Valley City State likewise makes the shifts offensively. Empty backfield. Vice goes in motion from the slot to the left. Left hash mark to right. Thor's guard looks out in the flat and it's knocked down. Good coverage out there by Dickinson State. The intended receiver that time for the Vikings, I believe. I'm trying to get a look if it was Bites or not, but it goes incomplete. And a good defensive play by the backfield for Dickinson State. I believe that was linebacker Riley O'Donnell was able to knock it down to bring up a second down and 10. First time Dickinson State's been able to shut down Valley City State on first down on this drive. So second and 10 at the 15-yard line. Again, Valley City State trailing 7 to nothing. There's that little quarterback draw again, and this time Chambers met right at about the line of scrimmage. Maybe we'll give him a yard as he falls forward, and it'll bring up a third down and nine for Valley City State, third and nine, and that'll be at the 15-yard line of Dickinson State. And that defensive line did a good job of staying home, didn't take the fake by Thor's guard, and were able to drop him right at the line of scrimmage and brings up a third down and 10 for the Vikings. Well, third and 10 for the Vikings. At the 15 of DSU, trailing 7 to nothing here in the first quarter. Thor's guard rolls. Thor's guard fires, going deep in the end zone, overthrows everybody. Great coverage down there by Dickinson State. So the field goal unit will come on. And the field goal attempt, well, let's see, the 15 back to about the 22, about a 33, 32 yard field goal attempt. And a good job by Dickinson State that time. Got the stop on first down, made it a second down and long, and then were able to keep Thor's guard from that quarterback draw. And then Good coverage downfield on third down, and uh, Thor's guard just threw the ball away and forces Valley City State to try the 32-yard field goal with Nielsen. On uh, Nielsen in, right hash mark. They'll put it down. 7-0 lead. Valley trying to get on the board. There's a low snap. They get it down. Kick is up. Looks good through the uprights. Is it good? Yes, it is. It is good. So it's a 7-3 ball game, Valley City State. A 15-play drive that covers 65 yards, and they get on the board. They get a field goal. Dickinson State gets a touchdown on their first drive, 7-3, with a minute 41 remaining to play in the first quarter. Dickinson State in the lead. We'll be back in 30 seconds with the Vikings kickoff to Dickinson State. 
Computer viruses are bad, and I'm as bad as they come. <laughs> I love breaking stuff. Once I'm inside your system, that's when the real damage begins. And there's almost nothing you can do to stop me. Oh no, consolidated. Make sure you're protected with a cybersecurity solution from Consolidated. Don't wait until it's too late. Call Consolidated today. I'll back with you. Dickinson State ready to return the kickoff for the second time in this ball game. The first time they did. Both teams impressive drives on their first drive. Just Aaron different Hawks results. The Hawks got seven. Valley City Charlie State Park. got three. Well, like I said, the Blue Hawks got a stop on first down on when they got it inside the 15. And once you're at the sticks or behind the sticks, it makes things difficult. Brown takes it at the five, back to the 15, 20, 25. Cuts back at the 30 to the outside. Break the tackle at the 30 and brought down at about the 31-yard line. So nice return about uh, from the five out to the 33-yard line, maybe 34, 33. Line. Same to nearly a 30-yard return. So DSU will take over at their own 33, leading 7-3. Again, Deconson Trinity now in command in Valva. Just uh, not too far away from maybe a trip to the Dakota Dome next Saturday. 90 seconds remain. They lead 38 to 20 over unbeaten and number one ranked and number one seeded Velva. Schumacher. Nope. Let's make him Brantley in the backfield with Zuroff and Mabler. Mabler will put Bowden in motion. Wide to the near side. He joins Sickler. Shepard wide to the far side. They go right across the middle. Bowden's got it at the 50. Break the tackle at the 40, and he's inside the 40 to the 36-yard line. What a throw by Mather. That young man just throws a great football, and that will cover 31 yards to Bowden as he holds it in for 31 yards and a first down. Dickinson State six first down. Well, with Kudana out of the lineup, they, Bowden slides up to that starting spot, and he's really been producing here the last couple of ball games with Kudana out of the lineup. Four of four for 78 yards passing now in the football game for Mather. Mather looking deep downfield out the sideline. Oh, he had Bowden behind the defender, but I'm not sure if number 22 for Valley City, Balazar, got a hand on it or not. Bowden did, but it might have been tipped, and that was looked like seven all the way, but just couldn't happen, so it goes incomplete. Bowden had a step on the safety, Paco Balthazar, and Balthazar just got his hand up there and like you said don't know if he tipped it or if he just distracted Bowden went off the hands of Bowden and incomplete and uh, Valley City State gets a break on that play for the Hawks. Third or second and ten now at the 36 of Valley City for Dickinson State. 50 seconds remaining to play here in quarter number one seven three Dickinson State leading Valley City State. Again ready to go to work Mather. Little delay handoff to Zuroff. He's got a hole. Breaks the tackle at the 30. Dives down to the 29 yard line. He'll pick up seven on the play for Braden Zuroff and it'll bring up a third and three for Dickinson State at the 29 of Valley City. Just a patient run that time by Zuroff. He's a look to the inside, look to the outside and then went straight ahead once he got off tackle and got a nice gain and brings up a third down and short for the Hawks. Six carries, 34 yards for Zuroff. So third down and three at the 29 of Valley City. The Blue Hawks in the rushing department this afternoon in the contest have rushed for a total of 46 yards, or 45 yards, excuse me, rushing. There's the handoffs. They're off straight ahead, and he's got first down yardage at the 25. He'll pick up three on the play, make it four on the play for Zeroff. And we got quarter break. Quarter break, okay. Seven uh, carries now for 38 yards. First down number seven for Dickinson State. First and 10 at the 25 of Valley City. When we come back, a quick quarter. Dickinson State University after one. Leading Valley City State, threatening again at seven Dickinson State, three Valley City State. We'll be back in one minute. The dictionary defines community as a group of people living in the same place or sharing common goals. Community is the largest part of our name and we make it the largest part of our business. We support our local schools, organizations, youth programs, and local events from Bowman to Bismarck because we all share a common goal to better the quality of life in our communities. Come bank with us at Dakota Community Bank and Trust, your real community bank. 
So let's say you buy one of those value meals, and it costs you about 10 bucks. Then they give you one free value meal once a week for the rest of your life. That would be a pretty good deal, right? Well, at Dan Porter Motors, when you buy a vehicle, we give you free car washes for life, valued at about 10 bucks. Let's say you wash your vehicle twice a week for 10 years. That comes out to over $10,000. That's a pretty good deal. See Dan Porter Motors for your next vehicle and get free car washes for life. Sixth play of this drive for Dickinson State. Hawks lead it 7-3. Mather puts a handoff again to Zeroff. Fights his way inside the 20. Just pushes the pile inside the 20. Down to the 18. And let's give Zeroff a pickup on the play. Uh, about seven yards on the play. So second and three. And a good push by the right side of that offensive line. As they gave Zeroff all kinds of room and got a nice game. Brings up a second down and short. And they bring in the quarterback to play some wide receiver as uh, Bridger Grovem in at the slot on the right side of the formation. So Sickler and Grovem go wide far side. Near side below us is Bowden. So Colin will come out all by his lonesome right off on the numbers on the left side of the formation. They put Grovem in motion. They fake to him. They go straight ahead to Zura. Zura fights for first down yardage. I do believe he's got it. Man, that young man out of Beulah, North Dakota, Glen Up, and New Salem High School runs hard. A pickup on the play all the way down to the 14-yard line. And that'll be a pickup on the play of four more yards for Zura. Well, he's listed at 5'11", 210, and he's just a solid young man as he's really put together, got good strength, and able to use that strength in his legs, and uh, the Blue Hawks will get him back for one more year next year. Ball on the 13th now of Valley City, on the 13th, excuse me, of Valley City. Dickinson, state leading 7-3. They're looking towards the end zone. They're going back on the coverage, diving. Did he come up with it? Let's wait and see. Touchdown. Boy, what a heck of a catch. Sickler with a great catch on the play. He goes up and comes down with it just a kind of alley-oop throw. Sickler dives and dives and he comes down with it. Does Sickler for the touchdown. So it'll be a touchdown pass of 13 yards. So a touchdown pass of 13 yards yards for Dickinson State University and a nice throw that time by Madler as he just threw it up in the corner and Sickler was the only guy that was going to have a chance to catch it and made a beautiful diving catch there's a snap out there and it's an incomplete and a bad snap and the PAT attempt is not good so Madler alertly tried to get it out on the flat that time the Schumacher but had a lot of pressure so the PAT not good not missed on the kick, just missed on the bad snap. So 13-3, Dickinson State leads Valley City State. That score coming with 13-30 remaining to play in the second quarter. And that was a nice drive by Dickinson State. A play, 67 yards for the Blue Hawks. And on the CHI, St. Alexia Hotel scoreboard, Dickinson State University leading Valley City State 13-3. 13-30 left to go. First half, we'll be back in 30 seconds. Dickinson State again goes eight plays, 67 yards. Stickler hauls in the touchdown pass from 13 yards out. And the Blue Hawks lead at 13 to 3 after a bad snap and uh, not successful. Well, didn't even get a chance to kick the PAT. Mandler tried to throw it for the two point conversion, but it wasn't successful. There's a high end over end kick right down to the 10. And it's going to be filled there on the near side to the outside, breaking the corner at the 40. And there comes a flag down and out to the 50 yard line. That'll be a legal block to the back, but uh, again, nice return of 40 yards that time. Not very good coverage by Dickinson State downfield. There's a lot of room between the left hash mark and the sideline on the Valley City sideline, but let's wait and see. Andrew Fisher will come to the middle of the hash mark and say what the penalty is. It's at the 39, legal block or hold, whatever you prefer. It'll be a hold, so that'll put it back 10 yards. So Valley City will go to work at their own 
34-yard line, it looks like. Well, all he knows the Valley City coaching staff sitting right next to us weren't too pleased with the call. I don't know <laughs> if it was the call that they were displeased with or the block in the back or the hold that they got called for. <laughs> so the 34 for Valley City State takes over with 13-21. Their first drive again ended in a field goal. Dickinson State, two possessions, two touchdowns. They lead 13-3. And the Hawks set defensively. Now we've got, I think, Chambers in at quarterback. Jim's going to be my quarterback keeper today, Whisper. As we go, Bice on the carry. He's got positive yardage from the 34 to the 38. Give Bice a pickup of four on the play. No, I believe that's still Thor's yard. Still Thor? Okay, number five. Okay. We need him to put different numbers because those fives and nines kind of look similar. <laughs> I think one should wear a white helmet and one should wear a red helmet. Then we would know, but they'll go with that. So pick up a four on the play, second and six for Valley City at their own 38-yard line, trailing Dickinson State by a margin of 13-3. to three. Again, Thor's guard will call out signals. There's the snap. He drops back out of the shotgun, rolls. Madron's back there chasing him. Now he's going to tuck it. Now he's going to run with it. He'll run out of bounds right about the line of scrimmage. Maybe stepped out at about the 39 as he had good pressure that time from a host of Blue Hawks. We'll give Thorsgaard a pickup of one, third and five for Valley City at the 39. And good pursuit that time by Dickinson State. Once he broke the pocket, those linebackers were able to come over and force him out of bounds for a short game, bring up a third down and five at their own 40. Third and five, 40-yard line for Valley City, 12-25 left to go, first half. Dickinson State, 13, Valley City State, three. Vikings go trips to the far side. Near side, they'll bring the twins from Aitman. Thor's guard by his lonesome. He likes to run that quarterback draw out of this set. He drops back, dope across the middle, and it's going to be incomplete. Would have been close to first down had the receiver that time held on to it. And that's been, uh, I believe, Austin Young, the intended receiver that time. They got two 13s. I remember Young had a nice game at Valley City, but couldn't come up with that one punt time for Valley City. And good coverage by the outside linebacker, Nathaniel Jillick, the Dickinson Trinity product, as he was right on the hip of the receiver and able to knock the football away and force Valley City State to punt the football. Well, the Vikings will be in punt formation for Valley City State. And to do the punting, number 31, Masilla Siwa. Siwa, beautiful high end over end punt, but it's going to go out of bounds. That'll be interesting to see where they put it at. Coach Stanton's pointing at about the 35, 36 yard line, yeah, and yeah. A, the official coming up is going to stop at the 31. <laughs> he just wanted a little bit extra, didn't get it, but Nickerson said he'll take over at their own 31 with 12.06 remaining to play in the first half. Nickerson State 13, Valley City State 3. Well, it wasn't a real far punt, but it was real high. It almost came up to our eye level here on the third floor of the BAC. Yeah, over the roof of the BAC. Mather, do we got a new running back? Nope, that looks, still looks like Zeroff in there. So Zeroff has been the workhorse here for Dickinson State. A touchdown, rushed for nearly 50 yards, and has a pass reception. Mather's going to swing it out. He's got the receiver, Shepard, to pick up on the play out to the 35-yard line, and that will be a pickup of four for Shepard. Well, It'll bring up second down and six for Dickinson State. Yards. Well, Dickinson Trinity closing in on a victory this afternoon with four minutes left. They lead Velvet, Gray, Velvet Drake Animus Garrison 45-26. to 26. And Velvet Drake Animus is whatever. They haven't lost very many games in the last three years, so what a job by the Titans. Six of seven now, 89 yards and a touchdown for Mather. Second and six at the 35-yard line of Dickinson State. Mather was off in the backfield. Here comes a little pressure on the blitz. They fired out. That's going to be close to first down yardage. They'll put it right at the 41, hauling that one in as Sickler. That'll be a pickup on the play. Uh, we'll give him seven yards on the reception and a first down for Valley City, or That's for Dickinson State. So first down for Dickinson State. Again, the Hawks now. That's their 10th first down of this football game. So it'll be first and 10. And again, the ball at the 41-yard line of Dickinson State. Well, the Blue Hawks average, I believe, around 24, 25 yeah. first downs. So one of the top teams in the nation. I think they're like number, I wrote it down someplace, number five or number six in the nation in first downs per game. Madler again with Zuroff to his right. 41-yard line of Dickinson State. Low snap, Madler fills it cleanly, steps away from the pressure. Looking downfield, still looking, still looking. Now he's just going to tuck it, and he'll just throw it away. Wise choice. Good coverage 
downfield by Valley City, trying to go to Sickler. Sickler wanted a hold. It looked like somebody got grabbed him by the waist, and he did that also, and like an offside penalty, but no call from the officials. And now we got an injured Valley City State player down. Well, and Riley Gerhardt had the pressure on Madler and forced him to take off to the right side as the the Valley City State player is Georgie Magneo down on the field, one of their defensive linemen. Seven for nine now, 96 yards passing, and second and 10 upcoming for Dickinson State at their own 41, but we do have that injury timeout. We'll just keep it right here, and again, as Jim alluded, Trinity not too far away. It's just about time for the Titans to uh, maybe celebrate a big victory on the road. They've been trying to get that semifinal, quarterfinal bugaboo off their back for a long time, and it looks like they're going to do it today. And a good balanced attack for the uh, Titans this afternoon is uh, Ty Dawson has had a big game running the football, and Jace Kobosh a, a big game both running and throwing the football. That's the one thing Trinity does offensively. They've got a good balanced attack. It looks like they're going to get the job done and head to the Fargo Dome next Friday. So Dickinson State here leading 13-3 to on the CHI. St. Alexia South scoreboard. Ten and a half minutes remaining to play. Booster day today here at Dickinson State, and uh, we've got the uh, Booster Seniors are honored before the game. The Booster Award honorees will be honored at halftime. My brother, Steve Flannan, pretty proud of that young man. Outstanding Achievement Award. Nick Stevenson, a great guy, honoree Letterman Award. And Mandy Erickson, the president of the Booster Club. Nobody works harder than Mandy. She'll receive the Loyalty Award now. All three of them will be honored at halftime and at a nice uh, ceremony at the Eagles beginning at 6.30 tonight. Plus, all the seniors will be honored, too. So if you've never been to this event at the Eagles. It's really a nice ceremony. Doesn't take very long, probably 45 minutes to an hour, but uh, they honor some pretty special people and some great seniors. And uh, always nice to bring the uh, the uh, golf cart golf cart out. So, so again, it looks like the injury was pretty serious that time. Yeah, or, Georgie Magneo, Magneo is uh, one of the top defensive linemen for Valley City State, and he's uh, hasn't gotten up off the floor. And, it's a tough break for Valley City State, one of their talented defensive linemen going out with an injury here with ten and a half minutes left in the second quarter. Yes, Magneo, a good player. They're going to help him up and get him going. There's Georgie and Georgio. There's two Magneos on the football team, and I'm assuming they are, I don't know if they're twin brothers, but I'm assuming they are brothers. Well, one's a sophomore and one's a junior. Well, maybe not then. But they help him onto the golf cart. You hate to see that. Yeah. One of the starting linemen for Valley City State, that a very talented one is Valley City State, that defensive front four in the linebacking core. They've got some talent up there. You hate to see a, one of those players go down with an injury. Georgio Anchorage, Alaska, so I'm betting you a dollar or two. They probably know Galen Brantley pretty good, too. That's where Galen's from. So heads over. Looks like a lower body injury for Mangio and Dickinson State. We'll set offensively, second down and 10. Coming off that incompletion, we had quite a delay. Mandler, 7 of 9, 96 yards passing, one touchdown. Ten and a half left to go in the first half. Dickinson State, 13, Valley City State, Three. Again, Mather will put Zeroff to his right. They'll put a man in motion, drove him, bad snap, and they're just going to run that little delay to Zeroff. Breaks the tackle, fights his way out across the 43, 44 to the 45 yard line, and that'll be a pickup of four for Zeroff on the play. So a four yard pickup, and it'll bring up a third down and six for Dickinson State. Well, they bring Bridger Grove the backup quarterback in. He lined up in the slot to the right side, came in motion. Fake the jet sweep and then run the delay to Zeroff, and Zeroff got a gain of about four. Second down and six, or make a third down and six, excuse me, for Dickinson State at the 45-yard line, their own 45-yard line, leading 13 to three, 9.50 remaining to play before halftime. Long count by Madler. He's got time. He's got movement. He's going for Shepard. Shepard trying to run under it. He dives. He's got it at the five. Touchdown! And they got the play. Do we have flags down? Let's wait and see what the call is. There is a flag down. That pass covered 55 yards. A perfect throw. And they're going to call a hold, I believe, on Dickinson State University. Yeah, the flag's right in the middle of the field, so it'll be a holding call, so take the score off the board and back the Hawks up with their first penalty of the afternoon. But what a beautifully thrown pass by Madler. And 
Shepard was about two steps behind the wide receiver and just put the Jets on and ran under it and got into the end zone, but all for naught as the holding call will black the Hawks up behind the sticks. So it'll be a fourth down, third down and 16 now for Dickinson State, but a beautiful play for Knott here for the Blue Hawks. But 9.40 left to go. Shepard got by everybody. He's catching his breath. Well, let's see what the Hawks do. They have to get out to the 49 of Valley City State. Mather again sets that offensive unit. 13 Dickinson State, three Valley City State. Touchdown just off the board. And now what have we got? Valley City want a timeout or Dickinson State want a timeout? Valley does. So we'll join Valley City State, a one-minute timeout on Consolidated Live. KDIX 941 left to go. 13-3. Dickinson State leads here in the second quarter back in 60. The Eagles Club in downtown Dickinson is the best place to get together with your friends and enjoy a nice cold beverage any time of the day. They have weekly lunch specials from 11 to 1.30 and beer and wings Thursdays from 5 to 9. The Eagles is also available for your special event. Call now to reserve your date. You'll find everything the Eagles is planning on their Facebook page, and you can check out their monthly calendar to see all the entertainment and events going on. Whether you're looking for something different for lunch or something fun to do with your friends, try the Eagles in downtown Dickinson. 35. Mather back to pass, spins away from the pressure. Gets another block. Now he looks downfield. He's going to throw it away, trying to go to Shepard. But good coverage downfield that time by the Vikings. And good choice that time by the quarterback just to throw it away, not try to force it in there. And it'll bring up a punting situation for the first time for Dickinson State today. And good pressure by Riley Gerhardt as he came up right up the middle. And Madler able to spin away from the pressure, get to the near sideline. Had a chance to get the pass off to Shepard, but just threw it over his head and threw it out of bounds. And Groven will come in to punt the football away. So Bridger Groman back at the 20-yard line stands there. Let's watch the snap. It's a good snap. Here comes a big rush. He gets it off. High end over end punch. Speaking him for the fair catch on number 14 back at the 25. Good punch that time by uh, Grobham. Uh, Mick, Micah Olson back there. And Valley City will take over at their own 25 with nine and a half. Left to go here in the first half. Dickinson State 13, Valley City State 3. And one of the offensive linemen came up hopping off. Uh, Justin Vila uh, came over to the sideline. And once he got to the sideline, couldn't put any pressure on his left ankle. One of the backup offensive linemen for Dickinson State. And we'll keep an eye on that. Dickinson State's defensive unit out there. Again, they work a lot of people in that front seven. In and out they go. Dickinson State leads it by 10. There's that little handoff to Bice. He tries to break to the outside. Nothing doing there. Big number 99. Fred Lundstrom out of Haven made the contact and drives Bice down for maybe well, back to well they say a loss of a yard on the play so bring up second and 11. Lundstrom a 6'3", 300 pound sophomore a transfer from the state college of science in Wapiton just got a good pressure on the defensive line on that right side and able to get the tackle for a loss and puts the Vikings behind the sticks on a second down and 11. So second down and 11 Dickinson State ready to set defensively long count Man in motion comes near side. They look deep side. They go out in the flat, and they've got the receiver out there, but shy of first down yardage. Not quite sure where he stepped out of bounds. About the 31, maybe 32-yard line. It'll be a pickup of about seven on the play. They'll bring up third down, and let's call it third and three for Valley City after that seven-yard reception. And I would said a lot. Yoshino having a good afternoon. Made the catch, stepped out of bounds, and instead of a third and long, it'll be third and about three. So third down and three, Valley City at the 32, their own 32-yard line. Trailing Dickinson State by a margin of 13 to three. Back to pass, they swing it across the middle. They've got it set up well. Nice little swing pass. That's going to be hauled in at the 40 and all the way out to the 48. Well-designed play, and Deutsch comes up with the reception from the 32 out 
to the 47, a 15-yard pickup on the play. Deutsch just able to find a little space between the defensive line and the linebackers. And made the catch and turned up field, got a nice run after the catch and gets the Vikings a first down across the 45 to about the 47. 7.55 remaining to play in the first half. Dickinson State 13, Valley City State 3. Again, Thorsgaard remains in at quarterback. There is that little handoff. Vice up the middle. Got about three from the 47. They pop the cross midfield to the 41. Let's give Vice a pickup of four on that play. So Vice picks up four and will bring up second and six at the 49 of DSU. Well, just over a minute remaining for Trinity as they lead Velvet Drake Animus Garrison 45 to 34. So Dickinson State sets defensively. Mattern in the defensive end position. They'll go with almost one uh, four-man front this time. They'll go four, almost like a 45-2, 4-5-2. But we'll see if the defensive backs come up. They do. And there's a handoff with Nope. They're keeping the ball in short game. Good read that time coming in to make the hit for Dickinson State. Wyatt Anderson. So pick up of just a yard on the play for Ford's yard. And it'll bring up third down and about five for Valley at the 47 of Dickinson State. They just ran a little quarterback draw as Thorsgaard takes a step back and then heads to the line. And Dickinson State read it well and held him to a short game. Brings up a third down and about four for the Vikings. Again, they're looking to the sideline. Thorsgaard's got his play on third and four at the DSU 47. Six and a half left to go. Dickinson State 13. Valley City State 3. Thorsgaard with pressure across the middle. They got the screen set up. And Bice has got first down yardage to the 40. Good read that time by Thorsgaard. Got just enough time to get it off a pickup of seven on the reception by Bice. And Thorsgaard now seven of 11 for 59 yards. No touchdown, no interception. But Valley City keeps the drive going. First and 10 at the DSU 40-yard line. Well, just a well-executed play that time for Valley City State as they're driving inside the 41-yard line, right about the 40 of Dickinson State. Valley City State's Thor's guard again. Shotgun, bites to his left. Twins far side, solo near side. There's that quarterback draw again, and not fooled again. Dickinson State, one of the guys there, Lundstrom. Also in on the tackle, number, well, let's check it out, number look like 52, 53, 53, 53 Shell Osborne. And Shell Osborne, so that'll be a loss of a yard on the play, and it'll bring up a second down and 11 for Valley at the DFU, 41. Well, the Vikings are going to send Deutsch out, bring in the tight end Finney on this play. Five and a half remaining in the first half. Dickinson State 13, Valley City State 3. Lights to the right, shotgun set. Thor's guard trips far side. Empty receiver set right in front of us on the Dickinson State side. Thor's guard drops back out of the gun, fires it out in the flat. The ball is tipped incomplete. Not quite sure who got a hand on that. Maybe we'll pick it up on the trade no. Instant replay here. Let's see who it was. Number 53, I think Osborne again, got a hand on it, so it goes incomplete. Oh, it was either him or Wyatt Anderson. They were both getting good pressure right up the middle and brings up a rare third down and long for the Vikings at the Blue Hawk 41-yard line as we approach the five-minute mark here in the second quarter. 5-10 left to play. 13-3, Dickinson State leading Valley City State. Thorsgaard again, empty backfield this time, but the tight end and the slot back on the corners. They come quickly with some pressure. Thorsgaard scrambles, Thorsgaard run. He's trying to pick up the first down. I think he went down to his knee. Back at about the, well, I thought he went at the 39, but apparently the knee didn't hit. He gets to the 37, so he'll pick up about four on the play. It'll bring up fourth down and seven for Valley at the DSU 37. And I'm assuming that they probably are going to go for it. Well, the finals are in in both the Class A semifinals. Dickens and Trinity beat Velva 45-34. They'll face Kindred in the championship game. Kindred beat Langdon this afternoon, 34-32. What was that Trinity final again? 45-34. 45-34. So the Titans' offensive machine just continues to roll. Boy, that's impressive against Val. There's the punt. High end over end punt. Will it carry into the end zone? No. Oh, no, it did not. Great job down at the one-foot line by Valley City State. That was a superb special team play by the Vikings, and it looked like it was going to go into the end zone, but no, nope, one of the individuals down there. Let's get a number on that young man on the consolidated instant replay here. Now, that's number, I believe, number, I'll roll over there, young man, so I can give you name and number. <laughs> that play, number four, and that for Valley City State is Smith. 
and he kept it out of the end zone and it's at the one yard line where Dickinson State will take over. And we want to welcome everybody on KDIX Radio as uh, Dickinson Trinity game complete. The Titans beating Velva this afternoon, 45-34. The Titans will face Kindred in the championship game next Friday, 34-32 here. The Hawks lead it 13-3 with 418 remaining in the first half. Madler on the quarterback. Keeper breaks out across the 10 all the way out to the 12. Just about Bob. <laughs> Madler for 11 yards on the play. First down for Dickinson State. That'll be number 11 in the ball game for the Blue Hawks. And just a great job by that offensive line. Got a great push. And Madler able to get into the middle of the scrum and push it all the way out to the 12-yard line and get out from underneath their own goal posts. And the Blue Hawks with the first down at their own 12-yard line with 340 left to go first half. 13-3, Dickinson State in the lead. Again, congratulations, John Oderman and that Titan crew. What a job by them today. They go to 12 and 0 into the state championship game. There's the snap. There's the give. Zeroff straight ahead. He'll fight to about the 15 yard line and Zeroff will pick up about let's call it uh, three on the play. Braden this Braden afternoon now 11 carries for 57 yards. The Hawks as a team have rushed for 73 and have passed for 96. So second down and seven for Dickinson State. The ball at the 15-yard line, their own 15-yard line. The Blue Hawks leading on the CHI St. Alexia South scoreboard, 13 to 3. Remember, they had a 55-yard touchdown pass called back on their last drive that would have broken it open a little bit more, but they stopped Valley on the ensuing drive. Madner, handoff, Zeroff, hold 20, 25, out across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Pick up a 12 for Braden Zeroff on the play. And it'll bring up a second or first down, 11 12 first down for Dickinson State. And Dickinson State going to try and pick up the tempo here as we hit the two and a half minute mark. Again, Madler looking deep, looking deep. Across the middle, through the hands of Sickler, and maybe a little bit behind that time. He, I thought he looked to Shepard first and then followed it up with the pass across the crossing pattern in between the hash marks to uh, Sickler, but a bit behind him and incomplete, so it'll bring up a second down and 10 for Dickinson State. And Sickler was open. He either could have gone to Sickler or Brantley, who was off the left side, wide open at about the 35-yard line, decided to go to Sickler, but just couldn't quite connect. Second down and 10, 27-yard line in their own territory. The Blue Hawks lead 13-3. to There's Mandler with the snap. Mandler with time. Mandler looks. Mandler fires, looking for Shepard. Shepard's down there. He's got it at the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. There's no flags down. You can't take that one away from Cam Shepard. It covers 73 yards on the play. Shepard holds it in for a touchdown from 73 yards out. His second, a third catch of the ball game, and that was another thing of beauty, J.D. Yeah, he just went down the left sideline and had a step on the defender, and Mandler just put it up, allowed Shepard to run underneath it, and when he got the catch, the defensive back was in his rearview mirror and went in untouched from 73 yards out. Great pitch and catch by Mandler and Shepard. Brings up the PAT attempt. The Hawks will kick the PAT. What a drive by Dickinson State. Low snap. Kick is up. Did it get through the uprights? It did. Good job by the holder, Mather, the kicker, Miller. And Dickinson State goes a total of five plays, 99 yards and five plays for Dickinson State University. And the Blue Hawks open up the lead to 20 to 3 over Valley City with 2.15 left to go here in the first half. Back on Consolidated Live and KDIX with the Hawks kickoff. We'll do it in 30 seconds. Challenges and struggles are part of everyday life for all of us. At Infinity Real Estate Group, we don't back down and we take it all in stride. Omaha! Omaha! Hut, hut, hut! It's you. <laughs> Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! In these struggles, there are no mistakes, only life lessons. We may not be that good at some things, but we do excel in real estate. We are Infinity Real Estate Group. Experience the Infinity Way. Shepard down three catches for a total of 91 yards, and he would have had four for a total of uh, that 55-yarder that was called back, so he's having quite a first half. And Mather having a great first half, throwing it to kick carries all the way back to the three, 
safety. Take him there and bringing it back out across the 10. A little better coverage this time on Dickinson State. As the Hawks with excellent pursuit downfield. Looks like number 88 may be Xavier Westbrook on the return. And good coverage by Dickinson State. The Vikings will go to work deep in their own territory with 2.08 left to play. Remember now, Valley City deferred, so they will have the football to begin the second half. But trail now 20-3 to to Dickinson State. And that drive for Dickinson State, the key was first down, got the quarterback sneak out across the 10, out to about the 12, and then Zuroff with about a 12-yard run really gave Dickinson State some room to move the football, and then the long bomb to Shepard. So uh, those first two runs for Dickinson State to get it out from their goal line really gave them the opportunity to go deep and get the touchdown and increase it to a 20-3 to lead with just over two minutes left here in the first half. Fourth guard back to pass, scrambling out in the flats, going for number two. He's got it out at the 22-yard line. That'll be a pickup of 11. And uh, that is Bellatar, who plays defensive back, I do believe. I think that was number 22, but no, nope, number number two. Sotomayor. Sotomayor. So Sotomayor, or Sotomayor comes up with a 12-yard reception. It'll bring up first and 10 for Valley City at the 21-yard line, of their own 21-yard line. Forge guard with that completion. Seven, I'll make it eight of 13. Back to pass again. Forge guard looks, fires it across the middle, under overthrew. The intended receiver that time, number seven, my favorite name, Amagankepo. He couldn't come up with it, so it goes incomplete. So bring up a second down and ten for Valley City. Amagampe. Yeah, Amagampe. That's right. I got. I think I think Marika Potts were sending the press because it's it's like a who's who. I sent it to Jimmy. And I said, here you go. There's about 25 names, and they are names you have to work on. But the pass goes incomplete, so it'll be second down and 10 for Valley at their own 21. Forge guard again sets that. Oh, there's a snap. He wasn't ready for it. He'll just pick it up, and he'll be hit right at the line of scrimmage. In fact, that'll be a tackle for a loss. As Valley City broke down a little bit there. And in there again, I see Crew Matter down there, the guy that leads the team and tackles the loss, and that's a loss on the play of one yard. So it'll bring up a timeout for Dickinson State or for Valley City State. Valley City State takes the timeout. It'll be third and 13. We'll take a 30-second break on Consolidated Live. And KBI Action will be back with more Blue Hawk football. The Hawks lead 20-3 to in case you missed it. Trinity, a monster win over Velva, 45-34. to Dickinson Trinity goes to the state championship game next Saturday. We go to a 30-second break. World-renowned YouTube chef Lamise O oh brings her authentic Caribbean cuisine to the Dickinson area. Island Cuisine is open in the St. Joe's Plaza with available takeout and dine-in options. You'll find their entire menu on Facebook or call 483-9918 to place a pickup order. Enjoy incredible dishes like brown stew chicken or everyone's favorite, Rasta Pasta. Call now to order or stop in Island Cuisine located in St. Joe's Plaza, Dickinson. Down and 13 for Valley City State. Thor's guard again. We'll go to work. Let's see what the Hawks do defensively here. They're going to come with some pressure. They're trying to keep the receivers from. Thor's guard out of the shotgun, drops back. There's the pressure. Goes out on the flat. He's got the receiver, but well shy of first down yard. It's about two yards shy at the 30. Had to get to the 32. So it'll be a pickup on the play of about 11 yards on the reception, but I'm thinking Valley City State's probably going to punt the football away here. Well, the Vikings thought they got the first down as the quarterback, Thorsgaard, was signaling for the offense to get onto the ball, but they're about two yards short, and the Hawks will take their second time out. The State will stop the clock. Thorsgaard now in the football game. Nine of 15 in the contest. And what a great tackle by Tal Lundy as it looked like the receiver was going to get an opportunity to get the ball across the 30 to the 31 and get the first down. But Lundy grabbed him and brought him right down as he caught it. And it brings up a fourth down. And Dickinson State may get an opportunity to get the football back with a minute 17 left. 20 to 3, Dickinson State in the lead. Now they put it back even a yard. I thought it was back a little further. Now they're going to move it back up again. Well, whatever. We'll go. I thought he went out at the 28-29. They put it at the 30. Then they moved it back to the 29. Now they move it to the 30. Oh, let's see what Valley City State elects to do here. Oh, looks like they maybe bring their punter in. Well, Thorge Guard and Bice are in there, but they will quick kick. They did that a couple of times against Dickinson State at Valley City State. So let's see what Thorge Guard does right here. He's going to come up underneath center. 
He's going to take the snap, and uh, they're going to put a man in motion. They're going to try and maybe draw Dickinson State offside, or maybe just take the delay a game and maybe not do any of that. They just go straight ahead, and he gets the first down as he goes out to the 31-yard line. And that will be a pickup of two on the play. So a gutsy call by the Vikings, and they get the first down and keep the drive alive. Their eighth first down of the first half. First and 10 at the 32, their own 32-yard line. A little gamble that time by McCulloch, and it pays off with the two-yard gain in the first down. Again, Thorsgaard, a little inside screen, breaking a tackle. Is young, I do believe, as he comes up with, nope, that's my favorite receiver. Ame Gampe. Ame Gampe comes up with the catch, gets up about four yards, a short game, but nonetheless, he moves the ball. Second down and six. Under a minute remaining now here in the first half. At the 36, their own 36. Again, back to pass. Now looking across the middle. Pass is batted away. Good coverage trying to go to the big tight end that time. Number 87. That is Finney, and it goes incomplete. 10 of 17 now. 76 yards passing. No touchdowns. No interceptions for Thorsgaard. So third down. And let's call it third at the bottom of the minute. Their own Tell Lundy with the, the coverage that time on Finney as he just did an out pattern and uh, Lundy right on his hip and able to get his hand in and just knock it loose. And Valley City State now with a third down and long with just 42 seconds remaining here in the first half. Thor's guard will go to work on the offensive end. They need six yards to keep this drive alive. They trail by 17. There's Thorsgaard. Here comes the pressure. He scrambles out in the flat. He's got a receiver at the 45. And stepping out of bounds again is Ferris Amagante. And that'll be a pickup to the 48, a pickup of 12 on the play. Ninth first down for Valley City. Thorsgaard had all kinds of time and either had the back out of the backfield in the flat but decided to go to Amagante and got him to the near sideline, and you could hear the coaches next door yelling for him to get out of bounds as he was trying to get extra yardage and then turned and stepped on the out-of-bounds line and stopped the clock with 35 seconds left. Well, Valley City still with hopes of getting some points out of this, be it a field goal or a touchdown. Thorsgaard again, pressure, Thorsgaard again, wide open on the flat, but way over the head. They ran that little drag uh, play, hitch play, to number 13, Young, but... Pass about five, six yards out of bounds, but he was open. Uh, but the D back was closing in, but uh, good pass would have been a nice game for the Vikings, but it didn't happen. And they had no blue jerseys within about five, ten yards of him, but just overthrew the intended receiver that time. Young on the left sideline. It brings up a second down and ten for the Vikings at their own 47 yard line and just 30 seconds left in the first half. They'll double it up, twins right, twins left. Thorsgaard has Bice in the backfield, shotgun. Again, back, here comes the pressure. He rolled from it. Here comes some more pressure. Mather and putting it on. Did he come up with the catch? Nope, it's incomplete. Good coverage by the Blue Hawks downfield. Hartwell over there, and also coming up defensively, Riley O'Donnell, so it goes incomplete. And it will bring up a third down and 10 for Valley at their own 47, trailing Dickinson State, 23, with 23 seconds left to go before halftime. Thorsgaard just rolled away from the pressure to the right side, and he saw Bice coming back to him on the sideline and just threw it a little too far out in front of him, and the incompletion will bring up a third down and 10 with just 23 seconds remaining. Valley with two timeouts remaining. Dickinson State with one. Vikings set offensively. Shotgun trips to the far side. The Valley City State side, the left side. All kinds of pressure. They go across the middle. Oh, nearly intercepted. My goodness, right into the hands. Off the numbers of number 45, Brooks Talbert. If he hangs on to it, it would have been six for Dickinson State, but it's just an incomplete one. Good read that time by Talbot as he saw the screen being set up and just jumped the route, but couldn't come up with the catch, and it'll bring up a fourth down and ten, and they'll bring in the punt unit as uh, coming in, Masilla Siwa to punt the football back, going back Hartwell inside his own 15-yard line with just 20 seconds remaining. Now there's a good snap, not a big rush, and he'll just angle it away from everybody, you know, sail out a bounce uh, inside the 20, but they'll bring it up a little bit. And let's see, they come up to the 12-yard line, and that's where they'll put it down, and I'm suspecting Dickinson State will take a knee. Jimmy Dow will have the final 15 seconds of the first half. Hawks lead it 20-3. to three. Jim? Well, the Blue will come out, and uh, Madler, my guess, will take a knee, and then 
We'll go into our halftime break with just 15 seconds remaining. Again, Dickinson Trinity victorious this afternoon. They went up to Velva, beat the top-ranked team in the state 45-34. They'll face Kindred in the state championship game next Friday afternoon as Kindred defeated Langdon 34-32. The nine-man game, South Border, the Region 4 champs leading New Rockford Cheyenne 32-28 late in the fourth quarter. And early in the fourth, North Prairie is leading West Hope newburgh Glenburn 54-36. So those are your high school scores here at halftime. Dickinson State, a 20-3 lead at halftime as the Blue Hawks scored on their first two possessions. Valley City State got a field goal on their first possession, and then the 73-yard touchdown pass to Shepard to close out the scoring in the first half, and Dickinson State goes into the locker room with a 17-point lead at 20-3 on the CHI St. Alexius scoreboard. So that's the way we stand at halftime. Dickinson State with a 17-point lead. We'll take a two-and-a-half-minute break here on KDIX as well as on Consolidated Channel 18, and we'll come back with our halftime report again at halftime. Dickinson State 20, Valley State Valley City State 3, back with our halftime report in two and a half minutes. Favorite thing about my street? My co-op. It isn't just about electricity. It's about power. The power of information. About safety. Efficiency. Technology. I am the co-op. I am the co-op. And the co-op is me. The Hub in North Dickinson is more than your ordinary convenience store. From Godfather's Pizza and the Hub Cafe to gourmet coffee, tea, and more. Stop by early for breakfast or grab something to go. We carry a variety of donuts that we make fresh every day. If your vehicle is dirty, we now have a state-of-the-art car wash at both locations. Stop in and see what we have to offer at the Hub located on North Highway 22 or the Hub West Dakota Oil on East Villard in Dickinson. We're changing the way people think about the convenience store industry. Clogged or slow-moving drains are no match for Josh and his licensed techs at Unplugged Drain Cleaning of Dickinson. They provide 24-hour service to solve all your sewer problems. Using only the best equipment along with the latest drain camera technology to resolve issues while maintaining the integrity of your pipes. They take pride in thoroughly explaining your options, providing free estimates and great service, and making sure your issues are resolved permanently. Contact Unplugged Drain Cleaning at 701-290-9737 or online at UnpluggedDrains.com. Western Cooperative Credit Union is your local loan headquarters. Thinking about a new car or truck, ATV, boat, or RV? We'll make the process quick and easy. Call us today. Western Cooperative Credit Union. 85 years the Western way. Western Cooperative Credit Union is dedicated to offering you the best financial services around. We're local, we're personal, and we're great at what we do for you. Join the herd. Western Cooperative Credit Union. 85 years the Western way. West Dakota Oil and Fitterer Oil Company proudly offers products and services that help fuel our customers' lives with clean burning propane and bulk fuel and convenient on-site delivery with premium farm and road fuels. We provide energy where and when you need it most with locations throughout Southwest North Dakota. West Dakota Oil and Fitterer Oil Company, locally owned, locally strong, the products you need with the service you deserve. All right, thank you very much as we come back. How about that ENG lending? We haven't had an ENG lending sack yet. Maybe we'll get one in the second half, but thanks to Jay Wander and that great crew. Remember, of course, it's simple, fast, and easy with ENG lending. Well, let's take a look at our scoring summary for you. Dickinson State on the board first. Uh, Braden Zuroff on the 10-yard touchdown run, and that capped off a nice drive by and Dickinson State. Ten plays, 75 yards. The first drive of the football game, 9.26 left to go. After the Zuroff touchdown run, Miller hit the PAT. Uh, that was a lead of 7 to nothing. The Valley City got it back, put together their best drive of the football game. They put together a drive of, uh, well, they covered 15 plays, 65 yards of field goal uh, by Nielsen, Andrew Nielsen. Uh, made the score uh, seven to three at that time. Then the Hawks got it right back, put together another shorter drive this time. Eight plays, 67 yards, 
And again, Sickler with a great catch in the corner of the end zone. A 13-yard touchdown pass from Madler. PAT snap not good. Never even got a chance to kick it. So with 13.30 left to go before halftime, Dickinson State left 13-3. And then the Hawks got it back and put together another drive for a touchdown score. And that uh, included a quick drive, 99 yards, five plays. And, of course, that was a 73-yard touchdown pass. Madler to uh, Shepard and Cam hauled it in and raced into the end zone and Dickinson State bolted out after the PAT to a 20-3 lead and that is the way it stands at halftime. Dickinson State 20 and Valley City State in the ball game 3 at halftime. Again one other final today I wrote it down here Dickinson Trinity to the Fargo Dome with a 45-34 victory. Coach John Oderman and crew, congratulations to them. You heard the game on KDIX. Big thank you to Jonas Nelson with a great call from Velva. I appreciate his help. And again, Trinity will head to the title game next week against Kindred. But here at halftime, Dickinson State 20 and Valley City State 3. Another two and a half minute timeout or two minute break here. Tristan Stur and of course Mike Renner engineering back at the studio. Take it away, guys. Back with our team numbers and individual numbers. We'll do it in two minutes. Brevera's more than a bank. We're a group of people in the business of helping communities forge on. At the counter, we offer convenience so the day can forge on. In the thick of the hall, we protect your peace of mind so the season can forge on. And around the table, we make room for everyone so life can forge on. We're more than a bank. We're your path ahead. Bravera, forge your path. Class, we're gonna make a checklist. Notebooks, check. Pencils, check. Scissors, check. Internet, internet. Internet has become an essential tool for student success, and Consolidated can help with speeds up to 1 gig, along with the My Network app, providing the very best in network security and parental controls. I can't wait to go home and do my homework. Homework is a lot more fun when you have the right tools. Call Consolidated today. When there's a storm on the horizon, you typically don't get a lot of advance notice. So you brace yourself as best you can and rebuild when it's over. Times like these are what insurance is for, the protection of our livelihoods, our families, our homes, and our lives. We support our community coming together in times of need. As an independent insurance agency, we tailor our services to your needs. At Dakota Community Insurance, we can help you weather the storm. Talk to one of our agents today. I wonder how much my car is worth. I just don't drive it anymore. Dan Porter Motors will buy it. I'm tired of my old car. I just want something different. Dan Porter Motors will buy it. What about boats and campers? Dan Porter Motors will buy it. Now for a limited time, Dan Porter Motors will give you the most for your car, boat, pickup, camper, motorcycle, jet ski, tractor. You get the picture. Just stop in, give them the keys, and they'll write you a check. It's that simple. See Dan Porter Motors, 58601. End of the game. Let's go first of all on the uh, CHI scoreboard to the team stats. Dickinson State, again, an impressive first half offensively. Uh, 20 points on the board. Remember, the Hawks average about 37 coming into the game. Uh, in the rushing department, Dickinson State, 15 carries for 87 yards. Valley City, 16 for 35. Passing another great first half from Will Mather. And that includes a touchdown pass of 55 yards that was called back on a holding penalty. Mather, 8 of 13, 169 yards and two touchdowns. Floors guard 11 of 21 for 95 yards. Total plays, Dickinson State, some big plays. So Hawks have only run 28 plays, but they have 256 total yards in those 28 plays. Valley City, 37 plays for 100. And so 30 yards in the ball game. Again, for Dickinson State in the penalty department, they had two for 25. Valley City, 
had one for 18 in the football game. Hawk 60% on third down, and Valley City 55% on third down in the football game. Again, the punting averages, Dickinson State one for 40, Valley City three, averaging 35. Individual numbers, we mentioned Mandler, eight for 13, 169, two touchdowns. I think that is the cross-country team being honored out there at halftime, and a well-deserved award won both the men's and women's championship. So Mandler again, eight of 13, 169, and two TDs are up. Another solid half of rushing 12 carries for 69 yards, averaging nearly six yards a carry as one touchdown. Rushing Madler, three for 18. In the receiving department, Shepard, three for 91. Sickler, two for 19 and a touchdown. Shepard with the other touchdown. Bowden, two for 46. They're off one for 13. For Valley City, Thorsgaard again, 11 of 21, 95 yards. Bice, five for 16. Thorsgaard's 11 for 19. In the rushing department, leading receiver, Yushima, five catches for 36 yards for Valley City State in the ball game. So that's the way the individual numbers look. Turnovers, uh, one thing I didn't mention, uh, we have had no turnovers in this football game for Valley City. Whoops. Oh, you need that too for Valley City or for Dickinson State. So again, halftime 20, Dickinson State, three, Valley City State. Jim's got some defensive numbers for you, J.D. Well, the safety tell Lundy leading the Hawks with six tackles in the first half. Three tackles for Riley O'Donnell, three for Riley Waters, three for Brooks Talbot. Uh, one sack in the first half for Dickinson State. They had uh, Matt Anderson along with Austin Dennis combined for a sack in the first half. For Valley City State, uh, they were led in the first half. Uh, Jahidi West with two, also Michael Olson with two, and Emmanuel Spye with two tackles in the first half. But an efficient first half for Dickinson State, running the football, passing the football. And of course, uh, Will Madler had the two beautiful long passes to Shepard, uh, one for 55 that got called back, one for 73 that he put right on the hands. And those two guys are really connected this afternoon. And uh, Shepard did three catches, 91 yards, and one touchdown. And of course, Dickinson State has been very efficient, and they have uh, put 20 points on the board, scored on three of their first four possessions. That, uh, they ended the first one with a nice run by Zuroff. The second one, a nice catch in the corner of the end zone by Sickler, and then the long pass to Shepard for the third touchdown. So the offense has been very efficient. Defense, just that one drive, the uh, one that got the uh, field goal, they got inside the 15-yard line, but then the defense really stepped up and forced Valley City State to kick the uh, three-point field goal. And other than that, the Blue Hawks' defense has done extremely well as they have held Valley City State to just three points in the first uh, 30 minutes while the offense has been efficient. They've thrown the football well. They've run the football well and three scores on the board. About the only thing they did wrong was uh, had that holding call on the 155-yard touchdown and then had the bad snap on the uh, second extra point. So other than that, the Blue Hawks have looked pretty good. And uh, like you mentioned, they uh, honored the cross-country teams that came up with the uh, NSAA championships yesterday in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and uh, there's a picture on social media of Caleb Sarslin, the uh, uh, Bowman County graduate, basically flying to uh, edge of Dakota State runner to end up second, and that was kind of the difference for Dickinson State as they won the uh, men's championship by just one point, and uh, the Blue Hawk women uh, won it by 11. Both the, the men and women had five runners in the top 15. Their scoring runners were all in the top 15 and getting the sweep at uh, with La Crosse, Wisconsin. All right, halftime upon us again. Earlier today, Dickinson Trinity 45, Valva 34, Dickinson Trinity to the state championship game. Here at the back, the Blue Hawks lead at halftime 20 to 3 over Valley City State University. We'll be back with second half action. Let's make it a six minute break. Uh, Tristan, a six minute break back at the KDIX studios. Tristan?
toys. The Eagles Club in downtown Dickinson is the best place to get together with your friends and enjoy a nice cold beverage any time of the day. They have weekly lunch specials from 11 to 1.30 and beer and wings Thursdays from 5 to 9. The Eagles is also available for your special event. Call now to reserve your date. You'll find everything the Eagles is planning on their Facebook page, and you can check out their monthly calendar to see all the entertainment and events going on. Whether you're looking for something different for lunch or something fun to do with your friends, try the Eagles in downtown Dickinson. Challenges and struggles are part of everyday life for all of us. At Infinity Real Estate Group, we don't back down and we take it all in stride. Hey, don't move, I've done this oh, before. Oh, oh, oh. My turn, my turn. In these struggles, there are no mistakes, only life lessons. We may not be that good at some things, but we do excel in real estate. We are Infinity Real Estate Group. Experience the Infinity way. World-renowned YouTube chef Lamise O oh brings her authentic Caribbean cuisine to the Dickinson area. Island Cuisine is open in the St. Joe's Plaza with available takeout and dine-in options. You'll find their entire menu on Facebook or call 483-9918 to place a pickup order. Enjoy incredible dishes like brown stew chicken or everyone's favorite, Rasta Pasta. Call now to order or stop in Island Cuisine located in St. Joe's Plaza, Dickinson. Favorite thing about my street? My co-op. It isn't just about electricity. It's about power. The power of information. About safety. Efficiency. Technology. I am the co-op. I am the co-op. And the co-op is me. The Hub in North Dickinson is more than your ordinary convenience store. From Godfather's Pizza and the Hub Cafe to gourmet coffee, tea, and more. Stop by early for breakfast or grab something to go. We carry a variety of donuts that we make fresh every day. If your vehicle is dirty, we now have a state-of-the-art car wash at both locations. Stop in and see what we have to offer at the Hub located on North Highway 22 or the Hub West Dakota Oil on East Villard in Dickinson. We're changing the way people think about the convenience store industry. Clogged or slow-moving drains are no match for Josh and his licensed techs at Unplugged Drain Cleaning of Dickinson. They provide 24-hour service to solve all your sewer problems. Using only the best equipment along with the latest drain camera technology to resolve issues while maintaining the integrity of your pipes. They take pride in thoroughly explaining your options, providing free estimates and great service, and making sure your issues are resolved permanently. Contact Unplugged Drain Cleaning at 701-290-9737 or online at UnpluggedDrains.com. Western Cooperative Credit Union is your local loan headquarters. Thinking about a new car or truck, ATV, boat, or RV? We'll make the process quick and easy. Call us today. Western Cooperative Credit Union. 85 years the Western way. Western Cooperative Credit Union is dedicated to offering you the best financial services around. We're local, we're personal, and we're great at what we do for you. Join the herd. Western Cooperative Credit Union. 85 years the Western way.
As we come back to the BAC, just about ready to get back in action here. Dickinson State leading 20 to 3 at halftime over Valley City State. Dickinson State having a great uh, day offensively. Of course, the Blue Ox, as we mentioned, uh, average just about 37 points a game. They average over 400 yards in total offense, uh, total offense at 440. And today in the first half, 256. So they're right on pace for uh, that number. And again, just a, a fun team to watch offensively. Just a lot of skilled positions and a lot of skilled people at those positions. Uh, quarterback, running back, receivers, and the offensive line that you have. They have been telling. But remember, Valley City State earlier this year played Waldorf, Iowa. We're down 24 to nothing at halftime and came back and won 28 to 24. So they are very capable. And I sure beat that and reminded his squad of that at halftime. Chase Miller will kick it off. Sun still out here. Beautiful day. Got into the low 50s. No win. And there's an end over end kick. And that's going to carry down to about the five yard line. Take him there by number 88. Westbrook. And he's back to about the 20. And that's about it. Good coverage downfield. Let's get a number. That young man's excited. That number 21? Seven. Number 27. Okay. I thought it was 21. Uh, Jasper Ledoux. But it's 27. Austin Heimer. Who does play in the secondary quite a bit for Dickinson State. So Valley City State will go to work on their own 20-yard line, trailing 13-3. to three. Dickinson State, again, is limited. Valley City State in that first half to 35 yards rushing. The Hawks in the uh, top of the nation, top 10 in the nation, rushing defense, allowing about 59 yards per game. And the last time these two teams played, uh, Valley City State had just 7 yeah. yards in rushing. Let's see. Thorsgaard has gone all the way. We thought we'd see both Chambers and Thorsgaard, but it's been Thorsgaard all the way today. There's that little quick pitch on that screen out flat. And there's going to be a nice tackle over there by Dickinson State, a pickup of about two. I think that coming up to make the hit, number 38, I believe. Uh, let's wait and see who made the hit over there. I believe there. it was Jillick, 39. 39, there you go. So Jillick with a good read and a pickup of two on that pass completion. And it'll bring up a second down and about eight. Well, Daniel's had a really nice ball game. He's made some open field tackles, had a pass defensed in the first half. So the outside linebacker and the Dickinson Trinity product having a good, good ball game at linebacker for the Hawks. Just like his uh, former team, Dickinson Trinity, did today over Velva 45-34 to the state title game next Friday. Back to pass, Thor's guard straight back. There's Matter and chasing him. He's got a host of people chasing him. He's going to drop it off wisely, trying to get it to Bice. But, boy, he had about five blue jerseys chasing him all over the place, and he just had to scramble and get rid of it, and he did just that. Well, I wonder which direction Nathaniel's folks went today because uh, Nathaniel's got a brother that's a pretty good football player, Jeremiah, for Dickinson Trinity. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe his folks are up in Belva and having a good trip home after yeah. the Titans win. Maybe one and one. Maybe one here, one there, I guess. We'll, we'll have to investigate that a little bit. But uh, thus far, it's been a good day for the Jillicks, both at uh, Trinity and Dickinson State. Third down and eight at the 22 for Valley City. Thor's got out of the gun, drops back, throws it out on the plate. It's intercepted, I do believe, as it picked off. Tell Lundy, his second interception of the year. And you don't want to give Dickinson State momentum, and they've just taken it away from Valley City State. Great read by Lundy as he comes up with INT number two on the year. Yoshino, the intended receiver on the right sideline, and he was open, but Lundy just kind of deked him into throwing the football, and Thorsgaard just threw it up, got a little bit of air underneath it, and Lundy made the diving interception, and Dickinson State almost in the red zone with their first possession of the second half at the Valley City 27-yard line. Well, Dickinson State takes over, 14-03 left to go. Let's see what Will Madler and Coach McCarbo has called a brilliant game again today. Nothing fancy. Why not? Just go straight ahead when you got a guy like Zeroff in a 17-point lead. 
work the clock, run the football, and uh, eat some time and hopefully get some points out of it. And a great push by the offensive line that time. Rollins, Calixto, Lunick, Woodruff, and Benick. They have had an outstanding season and that time got a good press. And really, Zuroff got about 40 yards even before he got hit and gets a, about a five-yard gain on first down. 13 carries, 75 yards for Zuroff in the football game, averaging over 100 yards rushing per game. Mather puts Zuroff to his left. Long, long count. There's the snap. Why not? Zuroff again. Zuroff breaks the tackle at the 15, fights his, or the 20, fights his way to the marker at the 17. Give him a pickup on the play, I believe, and it's going to be enough. Well, we'll call it four yards. It was close to first down yardage, but it'll be third and one for Dickinson State. Zuroff has just outstanding footwork. He's got good balance and that time got into the hole and just kind of juke left, juke right, and then went straight forward and got a good game. Brings it up a third down and short for the Hawks. At the 17 of Valley City State, third down and less than a yard. Boy, there's a power formation. Brantley, Schumacher to the left of Mather, Zuroff to the right. Let's see what they do. They're going to go right to Zuroff. He breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage of 17. Dives down to the 14, and that'll be a pickup of three and another first down for Dickinson State. Just a power run that time by Zuroff behind the left side of that offensive line. Got into the 15-yard line. Gets the first down for the Hawks. 14th first down for Dickinson State. First and 10 at the 14 of Valley City. Zuroff and uh, Mather look over at Hayden Gibson, Coach McCarvel. As we said, just a great offensive game plan again today. Hawks have just been a fun offensive team to watch all year long. And the 11 guys on the field are credited for that. Zuroff again, he's got a little seam at about the 14, dives down to about the 12-yard line. So we will give him a pickup of two on the play. His 16th carry now for 84 yards in this football game. Well, it's just... Redundancy, just another power run that time by Zuroff and that offensive line doing a nice job. A short game that time as Valley City State's defensive front was able to corral Zuroff after a short game. Brings up about a second down and seven. Schumacher stays in this time. Uh, he'll go to the slot. Brantley will go tight on the line of scrimmage. Zuroff to the right of Mandler. Shotgun formation. Bowden and Sickler wide right. Try to go to Bowden. Did he hang on to it? Let's wait and see. Yes, he did. It'll be a pickup on the play. Nice catch. That was low. And Collin just went down and got it. And I believe they ruled it a catch. Yes, they did. So that's a 10-yard pickup to Bowden. And we're going to have a, an official's timeout as another Valley City State player is down on the field. But just a little quick in by Bowden. And they pass right on the numbers. And it'll be a first down and goal for the Hawks inside the five. As the Blue Hawks, another efficient drive this time. Is get it inside the five after the turnover. Of course, uh, this drive set up by the Lundy interception. First turnover of the ball game, and now we got another Viking down on the playing field. So the Hawks will come over to the sideline. Up, oh, he's up now. That's good to see. That's number 14 for Valley City State. Micah, Micah Olson. Olson. Yeah, he's a good player, too. Micah is the junior out of Dawson, Minnesota. Good to see he's up on his own power getting off the field. Dickinson State, again, leading. 20 to 3 and looking to add to that lead right now as Valley City commits the turnover, the pass interception, and it sets up the Blue Hawks. Grovem in there now. Madler's so, lined up at a wide receiver yeah, position that. out to the right. So it'll be first and goal at the three. Bridger, of course, likes to run it. They put Sickler in motion. They're going to go to Zuroff. Zuroff dives inside. He's into the end zone easily. Touchdown, no flags now. This offense, Jim, is just, you know, you watch it, it's just so proficient. And so it executes so well, and it starts in the line to the receivers to the back. It's just a fun group to watch, and that was a perfect example. Well, Dickinson State, they've got a balanced attack. They've got a good running game and a good quarterback with some good wide receivers. So they're hard to cover because they, they run the football well. They throw the football well. Uh, if you take away the run, the pass comes out. If you take away the pass, the run comes out. As Dickinson State's uh, offense has been really balanced this afternoon as Zuroff goes in for the second time. And the kick is up. Looks like it got through the uprights from up here. It did the PAT good. And the Blue Hawks turn a turnover in the seven points. And they increase their lead in this battle for supremacy in the North Star Athletic Association Conference. Dickinson State 27, Valley City State 3. We'll come back with the Hawks kickoff to Valley City in one minute. 
West Dakota Oil and Fitterer Oil Company proudly offers products and services that help fuel our customers' lives with clean burning propane and bulk fuel and convenient on-site delivery with premium farm and road fuels. We provide energy where and when you need it most with locations throughout Southwest North Dakota. West Dakota Oil and Fitterer Oil Company, locally owned, locally strong, the products you need with the service you deserve. And on your feet for the kickoff sponsored by Charbonneau Car Center. Well, back with you, the kickoff by Chase Miller sails in and out of the end zone, so Valley City State will go back to work at their own 25-yard line. The Vikings with 10.55 left now in the third quarter. Remember, this was a late start if you're joining us and go, why are they only in this third quarter? We've started at 2 p.m. Mountain Time start, which we'd like because it allowed us to get the Dickinson Trinity victory in, and now we are allowing uh, time to get all the Dickinson State game in today except for the first quarter. So we're ready to go to work here in the second half. Again, Valley City State down in this contest by 24 points. Back to pass. There's the ball out in the flat. He's got a receiver at the 40, you know, short of the 40-yard line, coming up with the catch is, uh, again, uh, Amege Pai, and he comes up with the catch, and that'll be a pickup from the 25 to the 39, a 14-yard reception. Well, Ami Gompoy had all kinds of room, and he was wide open, made the catch, turned up field, got a gain of 15, and the first down out at the 40. Ten, first down number 10 for Valley City, so first and 10. Just shy, 39-yard line is where they put it down. Again, Ferris goes in motion to the far side, trips to that side, the Valley City State side, left side. Forest guard back to pass. Here's the pressure. It's intercepted by Hartwell at the 30, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown! Hartwell picks it off and returns it 30 yards in the defense, doing the offensive job, setting up points and scoring points. And it's a 30-yard interception return. Hartwell for Dickinson State. He comes up with his fourth interception of the year. Coach Justin Thier has to be awful happy with the defensive effort today from his secondary. Yeah, Hartwell just picked it off and it was kind of a an off-balance throw by Thor's Garden as he was getting pressure right up the middle as the Riley Waters, the linebacker, came in on the blitz and forced him to throw the football. And that time, just an ill-advised throw as Hartwell jumped the route and able to get into the end zone on about a 40-yard or a 35-yard return. And the PAT is up and some pushing and shoving after the extra point and a flag comes out. So we'll see which way that goes as the team's kind of pushing and shoving after the PAT and the Hartwell interception. Well, I don't think anybody thought it would be 33-3 to with 10 minutes left in the third quarter. Valley City is a solid team, but the Hawks have just really dominated offensively and defensively. We're going to take a 60-second break here on Consolidated Live. Katie Gox, it is 34 Dickinson State, 3 Valley City State back in 60 seconds. Rivera's more than a bank. We're a group of people in the business of helping communities forge on. At the counter, we offer convenience so the day can forge on. In the thick of the hall, we protect your peace of mind so the season can forge on. And around the table, we make room for everyone so life can forge on. We're more than a bank. We're your path ahead. Bravera, forge your path. Improve your home with better Wi-Fi. At Consolidated, we can provide you with a reliable signal throughout your entire home, beginning with a managed router and access points enhanced by an array of features. To ensure maximum coverage for all your devices, speed packages up to one gig, and our Consolidated My Network app allowing you to monitor performance, access parental controls, and more. Improve your home with better Wi-Fi by calling Consolidated at 483-4000. Thank you, Tristan. Thank you, Jackie. Mike, do you, or Jim, do you realize that Dickinson had the shutout last week? They have not given up a touchdown for six quarters now this year in this uh, last stretch over Waldorf and Valley City State, two of the top teams in the conference. 
Well, and the personal foul on Dickinson State, and Chase Miller will tee it up at the 20. And the kick goes to the other 20, and it's fielded there by Westfield, and he brings it back across the 40. There comes another flag out. There's three well, of them. There's a and fumble. They say a fumble, and, and Dickinson State up. recovered I think it. Austin Heimer picks it up. Will he score? He does. Let's see if it stands. Let's wait and see. They picked it up at the 35. Hesbuck lost it, a fumble. And boy, you talk about from going bad to worse. It's going from worse to whatever is after worse. Let's see if it stands or if he was ruled down. Worser. Worser, there you go. <laughs> That's the word I would I don't say. know if any of the English teachers would appreciate using a word like worser, but uh, if that stands, there'll be three turnovers in about uh, five and a half, or just about five minutes. Well, let's wait and see. They haven't changed the scoreboard. They're talking it over on the return again. It was number 88, Westbrook. And he brought it at the 20, got hit at the 40, and then it was just going down. And then Heimer came out of the pile where the tackle was made with the football. Now, I'm not quite sure if it was uh, ruled a fumble or ruled down by contact on the ground. We'll have to wait and see. Just, we'll just hold on here. The officiating crew pushing the Valley, Valley City State team back to the sideline. So let's wait and see. 34 Dickinson State, 3 Valley City State, and boy, the Hawks come out bombing and ready to go. Valley City State's been stunned here in this one. Well, this one, before this one, Valley City State threw two interceptions. One, uh, they turned into a touchdown on an offensive drive. The other, Hartwell took in for the score, so the Blue Hawks have scored 14 points off of two turnovers as the officials just standing out at the 40-yard line discussing it. There's Two flags in the middle of the field, one flag on the right sideline, and they're talking it over. I don't know if they all through the flags are the, for the same foul or if it's two separate fouls, but it's a long conversation out there with the officiating crew with just under 10 minutes remaining. And Austin Heimer just kind of came out of nowhere with the football and went into the end zone, and let's see what the officials have to say. The ruling on the field was the Valley City down. His forward progress was stopped. There's holding. 54 white. It's terrible. After the unfortunate penalty for Simpson State. Wow. 27. <laughs> yards, first down for so they'll march off the 10 yard penalty for the holding call. <laughs> And that'll go back to the 30-yard line. Then they'll get the unsportsmanlike conduct Here's penalty. A, well, it looks like uh, I'm watching it. And the ball was loose, so I, well, let's watch it again. They don't have the replay. We do. Okay, he's hit there. He's still up, still up. There, the knee is down. Okay, he was down. The ball comes out. Heimer picks it up, so the correct call, but I'm just trying to figure what the follow was personal follow runs much like conduct against timer but the officiating crew made the right call on the ball down so that was correct so valley city takes over after the penalties assessed at their own 45 they're just going to go straight ahead and just try to slow the pace down and i tell you right now it, this game has the potential of getting maybe a little bit chippy both teams uh, really getting after it now and valley city of course upset down 34 to 3 they were hoping for something different and now we've got another player down for Valley City State. Well, they have been banged up and brutal today. Is that Bice? I think it might be. Oh, man, they do not want to lose him. He is Zeroff and Bice, a couple of the top running backs in the conference uh, this year. And Bice, uh, again, a junior, I do believe, Justice. Nope, they've got him listed as, as a senior. senior. Okay, listed as a senior. But we'll just keep it right here, Tristan, while they sort out this injury timeout. The Blue Hawks again lead. 34 to 3 again earlier today. Deckinson Trinity, just an impressive performance. It's never easy to win on. Oh boy, Bice is up and he's really being helped off. And kind of bending over, almost looking like maybe an upper body area, hip area, maybe ribs area. And he's going off very gingerly. So we'll see. Uh, the backup for Bice is Marty Gowen, a freshman, number 20. He will be checking into the ball game. Gowen. Probably will be back there. 5 9 out of Huron, South Dakota. Let's see if he checks in. It'll be second and eight. Well, the city's got to be wondering what the heck is going on here as Dickinson State thoroughly dominating. 
this matchup. Remember, Valley City State was playing for a tie of the conference lead. The Blue Hawks playing for the outright conference championship. And uh, again, I see one of the players uh, that got injured over there, and that was the big guy, number 99, Magneo. He is over there with a the backpack on and out of the football uniform, but moving around. Thorsgaard back to pass. Oh, no, nope, number nine in the ball game, and that pass is going to be hauled in. Nice catch downfield at the 35 of Dickinson State, and that'll be a pickup of uh, make it a 15, make it 17 on the play, and I think we're seeing Chambers in the ball game now, so Chambers comes in, and that's his first completion, first down for Valley City State as they move the chains. That is their 11th first down of the football game. And with the catch was Mason Yoshino, the backup wide receiver. He's had a good afternoon catching the football for the Vikings. And they do the ball game, uh, getting out of bounds on the near sideline after a pickup from the 33 out to about, uh, where they spotted down at, about the uh, 26. So pickup of about 6-7, number 12 into the ball game for Valley City. Oh, boy, we got another fun Kaiua game. Kaiua Nishigaya. Nishigaya on the carry. So Nishigaya on the carry for seven years. A lot of Hawaiians uh, on this roster, and those are Hawaiian names. So Niagacha into the ball game. Kahua Niagacha working at the running back position, second and three. And there is Chambers rolling out. He's going to fire it towards the end zone. Back on the coverage, and anybody over there? Touchdown. That's a nice catch, and that's hauled in, I believe. It was double coverage on the play. Ame Guampe. Uh, Guampe comes up with the catch. And Valley City finally gets on the board with something other than a field goal. And that pass play will cover yardage and a nice uh, throw of about, uh, let's call it about 23 yards for Chambers as he got it on the numbers and put it in there. So the PAT attempt is up and coming. Just threw it up, and Ame Gompwe was able to run underneath it between a couple of defenders and sneak in in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. PAT attempt is up, and it looks good, and it is good. So Valley City State makes it a 34-10 to lead. That was our final in Valley City at the end of September on a Saturday afternoon in Viking Land. And right now, we have 8-16 remaining to go in the third quarter. Dickinson State 34, Valley City State 10. We'll come back with the Vikings kick off to Dickinson State. We'll do it in 30 seconds. I enjoy as far as making those homeowners happy and being able to achieve their accomplishment of owning a home. Educating home buyers on their largest investment, making sure that they understand everything that goes into it for them. I am going to do whatever I can to get you the best program, the best rate, and the best mortgage. I guess after 25 years in all honesty, I probably still enjoy working with people buying their first house for the first time. It's always a happy ending. little pylon at the start of the end zone. Well, Valley City State took advantage of a couple of penalties by Dickinson State. They had the 15-yard penalty on the kickoff after the unsportsmanlike conduct on the PAT. So it was a short field, and then the personal foul on the return gave Valley City State the football at their own 45. High end over end kickoff, and uh, it's going to be fielded, I believe, by one of the up men, and that's going to be uh, the uh, Downfield, Shepard, and he'll be brought downfield at the 20 and brought down right. Up. That was like a pop fly to center field. You just kept waiting for it. And the kicker for Valley City, Nielsen, gets it way up in the air. So not real deep kicks, but gives his coverage team time to get down there. That was the case there. And the Blue Hawk offense coming out for uh, just their second opportunity yeah. is a the Vikings turned it over two times, once on a short field for Dickinson State's offense, and the other was a pick six. So the Blue Hawk offense has had plenty of time to sit on the sidelines and get ready with 8.09 remaining here in the third. What has been a lengthy first seven minutes of the third quarter. Well, Brown in now at running back. For two yards, it'll bring up a second down and eight. The Blue Hawks have rushed for 107 yards, passed for 180 yards in this football game. So over 300 yards total for Dickinson State 
in this football game. Again ready on second down and eighth at the 24. Madler sets that offensive unit. Long count right back to Brown. He's got a little hole. Gets across the 30. Fights his way out close to first down yardage. It's going to be a first down, so Brown will pick up eight on the play. Nice run by Brown. He is a different type of runner than Zura. Really shifty, not real big, but really speedy. And for Dickinson State, first down number 17 in the football game. And a big open hole on the left side of that offensive line for Dickinson State really gave Brown an opportunity to get to that second level. Blue Hawks going to bring both tight ends in, Brantley and Schumacher, and go with a little tight uh, formation with just two wideouts. So Dickinson State will go with Sickler and Bowden wide to the Valley City State side. The Hawks moving north end, so it's the right side of the formation. Again in the backfield, they go right back to Brown. He slides off one tackle and then hit right about the 34-yard line, and then he'll be brought down after a pickup of two on the play. So it will bring up a second down and eight for Dickinson State with six minutes and 30 seconds remaining to play, second and eight at their own, uh, let's call it 32-yard line. Georgia Magneo was in on the tackle as that defensive front was able to really get a good push. But Dickinson State, Browns. And Emmanuel Spy was able to come up and get Brantley on the on the turf before he could get the first down. So brings up a third down and about two for the Hawks just beyond the 40-yard line. So third and two at the 40, their own 40. Again, Brown stays in. Shotgun formation to the right of Mather on the hash marks, moving to the north end. They put Bowden in motion. Shepard, the lone wideout. Sickler stacks a wide receiving corner. They're looking to throw. They got it out in the flat. They got Brown out there. He's got it at the 45 and out across the 45 to the 47. Nice play that time. Nice setup, Jim, by Coach McCarville and the crew on the field. Well, that time Bowden lined up in the wide receiver position. Just did a little in formation, or did a little in cut, and the defenders came up, and then the running back, Grove, or excuse me, the running back Brown just came into the vacant area, and Madler put it right on the hands and a first down across the 45. There's a 17th first down, first and 10. Madler 11 of 16, 195 yards and a couple of touchdowns in this football game. They fake it, Zuroff back in there. They go out in the flat. There's Brantley again, wide open. He keeps his feet, and he works along the sideline. What a job. All the way down to the 35-yard line. That's a pickup of 13. I don't know how he stayed in bounce, but Brantley did. I'm going to look at the Trace Wells consolidated replay. Now, yeah, good job, a 13-yard, a 15-yard, excuse me, catch and run by Brantley. Well, it looked like Brantley was going to be stopped at the 45 and kept his feet, got it all the way down to the 35, so an extra 10 yards for the big tight end out of Alaska. First and 10 for Dickinson State, 35-yard line of Valley City State. They lead 34-10, to 10, trying to clinch the conference championship here today. Madler looking, Madler firing, going for Sickler down in the end zone. He got it. He generally had it. Oh, is he okay? Man, he went down hard. Just about ran into the goalpost. And just about ran into his teammate. I think he maybe would have been out of bounds anyway had he caught it. But nonetheless, Madler put it out there and the opportunity was there. And it just was a little bit long for Sickler. And that's one thing Madler has done well this afternoon is to get those long passes. He's hit Shepard a couple of times. One of them was called back and that time just a little bit too deep as the Hawks are going to check out two wide receivers, bring both their uh, tight ends, Brantley and Schumacher, into the formation. So Nate Schumacher to the right, Brantley to the left, Bowden to the left, Sickler to the right. And there's a fake to Zuroff. They go out to Schumacher. He breaks the tackle at the 30, and he's got close to first down yardage. He's got it right at the 25-yard line. So Schumacher, these tight ends are really talented for Dickinson State University. Almost like wide receivers, but just big, strong guys. And 
Another first down, 19 now for Dickinson State. Well, Brantley listed at 6'3", 230. Schumacher, 6'2", 230. They both do an outstanding job blocking, and when they get into the passing game, able to make some catches and back-to-back -back catches as Brantley got that long one after he, the, he uh, looked like he was going to go out of bounds and got an extra 10 yards, and this time Schumacher got 10 yards in a first down. 3.40 left to go, third quarter. Dickinson State, 34, Valley City State, 10. Madler with the snap. Madler with the look. Madler with the fire. He's got his receiver down there. That is Bowden, who's had a nice day today. Collin comes up with the catch. Line of scrimmage with 25. They move the chains down to the 13. That's a 12-yard pickup. And right now, Will Madler, just like a magician and a guy carving a prime rib, the, he has done a great job today with that football passing game. Well, he had two options. He had Bowden at about the 12-yard line, and he had... The running back, Zuroff, wide open in the middle of the field, so he had his choice, decided to go to Bowden. He got the first down inside the 15. There's a little give, the fake. And, oh, they go to Zuroff. Zuroff at the 10. He cuts inside the 10 down to about the 6-yard line. So, Braden Zuroff with the carry. He's closing in on 100 yards today. Zuroff will pick up five on the play for Dickinson State. Zuroff again, a total now in the football game of 18 carries for 92 yards, averaging about 105 yards per game. So he's right on pace for that again. This will be the, well, let's check it, the 11th play of the drive. It'll be second and four at the six for Dickinson State. Just under two and a half minutes remaining here in the third quarter, so a nice time-consuming drive for Dickinson State. Again, Dickinson State just methodically driving down the field. There's the uh, fake of the handoff. Madler keeps it. Madler turns. Madler ducks. And Madler goes down. A loss on the play. Tackle for loss that time. Number four, Smith in on the tackle. That almost looked like almost a busted play. Line of scrimmage was the six. Let's see where they put it down at. Looks like about the seven. So that'll be a loss of a yard on the play for Dickinson State. Well, that was one of those plays where Madler had the option to either give the football to the running back Zeroff that time or keep it. He decided to keep it and go to the right side, and Smith able to come up and make the tackle. It'll be Zeroff in the backfield, third and five at the Valley City State, seven-yard line, 34-10. Dickinson State in the lead. They fire it to the goal line. There's Bowden, touchdown. Colin Bowden comes up with the catch for Dickinson State. And I believe that's Collins' first touchdown catch of the season for Dickinson State University. And Bowden hauls it in from a total of seven yards out, and it's a touchdown for Dickinson State. And he's filled in nicely with the injury to Caden Kuntz. And just did a little five-yard turnaround. Uh, Madler able to put it right on the number four, made the catch, took a step back into the end zone, and the Blue Hawks back on the board. Dickinson State has scored PAT good. They have scored 21 points in this third quarter and now lead Valley City State by a score of 41 to 10 on the CHI. St. Alexia South scoreboard will come back in 60 seconds. One minute break on Consolidated Live and KTIX. I wonder how much my car is worth. I just don't drive it anymore. Dan Porter Motors will buy it. I'm tired of my old car. I just want something different. Dan Porter Motors will buy it. What about boats and campers? Dan Porter Motors will buy it. Now for a limited time, Dan Porter Motors will give you the most for your car, boat, pickup, camper, motorcycle, jet ski, tractor. You get the picture. Just stop in, give them the keys, and they'll write you a check. It's that simple. See Dan Porter Motors, 58601.
After the completion, that brings up a second attempt with the Viking 25. That brings up the third and one from the Vikings, 34. And on the tackle, David Hartwell. And on your feet for this collided financial third down. See foul scoreboard. There's the play, and it's going to be a tackle for loss. Chambers is going to run with it. Let's get the number down there for Dickinson State. Matt Anderson, the Jamestown High product with a good play, and Chambers will lose yardage uh, back to the 32-yard line. That is a loss of two on the play, and punt time again for Valley City State. And a great push by Matt Anderson. He's having a great year, an all-conference type of year. The junior out of Jamestown who had just got a good push and was able to make the tackle about a two-yard loss and force the punt by the Vikings. So to bring up a punting situation, there it is. It's going to be a low-line driver. It's going to hit it about the 30 and roll dead inside the 25. We got, what, a flag down? Yeah, flag came out right at the snap of the football. Okay, so let's wait and see. Ball spotted at the 24-yard line. And the flag came out right at the snap. It looks like it come back. Illegal. Illegal formation on Valley, so they'll make them punt the football again. Okay. So they'll back that up five yards. So Hartwell will go back at about his own 30-yard line to receive the punt from the Vikings. So Dickinson State, another opportunity. 19 seconds remaining to play here in quarter number three. It's been all Dickinson State. They lead at 41 to 10. Jim will have some numbers we'll talk about in the postgame, but the impressive numbers that Dickinson State has run through in the North Star. It's the 11th year of the North Star. High end over end. This is a terrible punt. Oh, my goodness. And now we got another flag down. The punter just pushed <laughs> and knocked number 24. Wasn't even looking at him. Pushed him from behind. Hallock. And let's see what that's going to be. The punt line of scrimmage was the 27. It's downed at the 45. 18-yard punt. Not quite sure what it's about. Well, we didn't have any, any penalties or any delays in that first half. And, well, sometimes when the game gets out of hand, you start uh, having these things happen. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Andrew Fisher, our referee. Holding 54, kicking team. 10 yards will be added to the end of the run. So they'll just add the penalty at the end of the kick. So okay. the Blue Hawks will get it at the Valley City State 35-yard line. Wow. Well, when it's not going good, it's not going good. And it hasn't been going good for Valley City this afternoon here at the back. And Bridger Grovem's going to come in at the quarterback position. And Darian Brown will be the running back for the Hawks. After the penalty on the play, that brings up a first and ten. So it'll be where they finally put it at the 35 of Valley City. So Grovem will get, to, again, Dickinson State uh, probably will look at a lot of people like they did against Waldorf last week. Bowden comes in motion. They run the little jet sweep to him, and Bowden will dive down to the 30-yard line. And that'll be a pickup of five for Colin on the play. Second down and five. That'll be the final play of quarter number three, a quarter that Dickinson State put on a total of 21 points to Valley City State seven. The Hawks 15 minutes away from their ninth straight conference championship. They lead Valley City State 41 to 10 on the CHI. St. Alexia South School Board back in a minute on Consolidated and KDIS.
Big Boy Toys. <laughs> The Eagles Club in downtown Dickinson is the best place to get together with your friends and enjoy a nice cold beverage any time of the day. They have weekly lunch specials from 11 to 1.30 and beer and wings Thursdays from 5 to 9. The Eagles is also available for your special event. Call now to reserve your date. You'll find everything the Eagles is planning on their Facebook page, and you can check out their monthly calendar to see all the entertainment and events going on. Whether you're looking for something different for lunch or something fun to do with your friends, try the Eagles in downtown Dickinson. All right, back with you. It'll be second and five for Dickinson State. Rover in a quarterback. Bridger will tuck it. Bridger will run it. Bridger will be close to first down yardage. I do believe he maybe got enough. He needed about five. Let's see what Rover comes up with. Well, that time they sent Bowden in motion from left to right and faked the reverse to Bowden and then Groveham just took it up the left side and got just inside the 30 or got right down to the 25 yard line so a first down. First and 10 at the 25 of Valley City. Dickinson State's 22nd first down in this football game. I think they average 24, 25 yeah. first downs per game so they're right on target. Yeah they're top 10 in the nation. I think top 5. I'm gonna, I thought I wrote it down here. I'm going to look in just a second here but my goodness they get a lot of first downs when you think about that. Well, when you average 36 points per ball game, you're okay. going to get a lot of first downs. Brown on the carry, breaks the tackle at the 25, slides to the 22-yard line. I'm going to watch that offensive line, Jim. Let's take a look and see if we got the regulars in there. They're playing some new people a little bit in this Brown one also. So Brown picks up uh, three on the play. It'll bring up a second down and seven. Well, they still got Bowden and Sickler at the wide receiver positions and Schumacher at a tight end along with Brantley. Timeout on the field for injury. Got an injury timeout for Valley City State. Back to the Blue Hawks. Is that number 94, Colorado maybe? The yep. Or 54. I think it's 94. Mason oh, 54. Or, there you go. Is it 54? Yeah, 54. Yep. I'm looking right here on the yep, number 54, and that is Mosiah Rogers Tavaya. <laughs> and I think that it was an official that picked him up. It's one of those. Uh, Spots where one of the officials kind of spots that a, a kid isn't really right. Yeah, and they just guided him off the uh, far sideline. Second and seven at the 22 of Valley City. Grovem at quarterback now. Back to pass, looking, firing, going for Sickler. Wide open. Can he get it? He does. Touchdown. Noah Sickler with the touchdown pass of 22 yards. The Noah Sickler. Sickler. Mountain. Shepard all having big days today. First pass of the ball game for Groveham. One for one for 22 yards and a touchdown for Dickinson State. And a great route that time by Sickler as he was able to get free in the end zone and a nice pass by Groveham. It just put it up, allowed Sickler to run in into it to, on the near sideline in the quarter and was able to make the catch and get the score for Dickinson State. They just get it up through the uprights. Madler with the hold, Miller with the kick, and the Blue Hawks 48-10 over Valley City State University on the CHI St. Alexis South scoreboard. Four plays, 13-32 remaining to play in this one. It's been all Dickinson State University as the Blue Hawks in command, 48-10. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Challenges and struggles are part of everyday life for all of us. At Infinity Real Estate Group, we don't back down and we take it all in stride. One, two, three, four, five, six, you go girl! In these struggles, there are no mistakes, only life lessons. We may not be that good at some things, but we do excel in real estate. We are Infinity Real Estate Group. Experience the Infinity way. 22 yards a touchdown, 16 of 22, 260 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. And the Hawks on the afternoon closing in on 400 total yards. And remember, they average about a total of 440, so they may get to that number today. There's a fair catch taken on the kickoff, and Valley City State will go to work. 
trailing now 48 to 10. Wow, what a performance by the offense. They have scored a total of uh, well, 41 points, or 40 points, or 41. The defense has scored seven in this football game. Got an interception that led to another seven, so it's been everybody contributing on a beautiful afternoon. Temperatures still in the 40s, sunshine bright, just a light breeze. The wind hardly moving the flag here. It's been a big afternoon for Dickinson State as they look to wrap up their ninth straight conference championship. See if Chambers stays in at quarterback. He does. He fires, looking deep, going downfield, and he'll overthrow the intended receiver. Good coverage downfield that time. I, Dickinson, I think it's Cooper McLaughlin, or was that Jillick maybe back there? Again on the coverage. Might have been Jillick. Back, it was Jillick back on the coverage of linebacker, so Heckles incomplete. Two of four now for 40 yards for Chambers. One touchdown, no interception. The Vikings in this football game this afternoon have thrown for 150 total yards. So second down and 10. 13-25 remaining to play. Back to pass, Chambers. Sometime across the middle. He's got a receiver open. And right in front of the linebacker that time, and that is Cody Asbeck as the receiver. Uh, number 19 coming up with the catch, Deutsch. And that'll be a nice pickup. Deutsch gets it out to the 44. So that's a pickup of 19 on the play and a first down for Valley City State University. So first and 10 for the Vikings as they pick up the first down. It'll be first and 10 at their own 44-yard line. Again, Chambers back to pass. Oh, they got a man wide open, and they underthrow it. As that play, they've run that two or three times. Pete Stanton not happy with that out there talking to his defensive group. Number 36, Whitebridge, the defensive back. Two or three times they've run that. They just haven't been able to connect on it. Well, they have two wide receivers to the left side of the formation. One goes in short. The other goes deep, and that time both the defensive backs bit on the pump fake to the short receiver and the, the deep man was <laughs> able to get wide open but just under through they'll set up again out of the shotgun of course we haven't seen Bice he got injured so Valley City working again out in the flat there's going to be a nice catch and throw there's going to be completion did he get a foot down it looks like he did yep that's called in that time uh, by Valley City State, Deutsch again, and that should be enough for first down, I do believe. Yep, it is a 10-yard pickup, so Chambers will get the pickup. Four of seven now for Chambers, 69 yards in the football game, so it'll bring up a second and for Valley City State. A total in this football game, 179 between Chambers and uh, Thorsgaard passing, but another first and 10 for Valley City State. So the Vikings keep the drive going. City with a total now of 15 first downs. First and 10 at the 46 of Dickinson State. Chambers on the run, breaks the tackle, tucks it in. Dickinson State, a lot of new folks in there, and you can tell a little bit. They're scrambling a little bit at the linebacking core and secondary core, and Chambers taking advantage of it. So that'll be a pickup on the play from the 46 to the 30-yard line. That'll be a 16-yard pickup on the play will bring up a first down and 10 for Valley City State. So first and 10 at the 30 of Dickinson State. 11.55 remaining to play in the game. Dickinson State 48, Valley City State 10. Trying to get some of those new names and numbers in there. Chambers, oh, going deep downfield. It's going to be incomplete. Good coverage down there in the pass. A little bit behind the intended receiver downfield. That looked like Deutsch again, so it goes incomplete. From the Blue Hawk 30. And on the up second and 10 at the 30 yard line. Well, Valley City State's been able to get guys open, just unable to connect as the receiver was open and the defensive back kind of closed that time and was able to get in the way and kind of disturb the receiver and the ball just went over his head into the end zone. Yeah, all new players in that secondary. I see Aspect back there. We'll try and get some more names there. The pass goes out on the flat. Good coverage out there in the secondary that time, number 27. I think that's Austin Heimer coming up to make the hit. He does a pickup on the play from the 30 to the 20, 27, a three-yard pickup on that completion. Heimer in on the tackle, so it'll bring up a third down and seven for Valley City at the 26th of DSU. Of course, Valley City in two-down territory now, down by 31, or make it 38 points. They're going to go for it regardless if it's fourth and 10, fourth and one, maybe even fourth and 20. Chambers again ready on third and seven. Rolls to his left. Fires across the body. Got a receiver wide open. First down yardage inside the 20. And that's going to be hauled in by number two, 
And that Sotomayor comes up with the catch, and that'll be a pickup of nine on the play. And it'll be a first down for the Vikings, their 17th first down of the football game. The Vikings good at putting together a nice drive here late in the ball game as they're trying to get on the board and make this uh, final score a little more respectable. Well, Dickinson State giving all kinds of players an opportunity here to shine. They like to do that on senior day. Everybody gets to play with the big lead, much like last week in that win. Chambers again rolls to his right. Again, he's going to be down there. Again, they go towards the end zone, and it's a high pass and overthrown. Well, I thought there was a holding on number 84 down there, but no flag came out. Or the flag did come out, yeah. I was going to say, my goodness, I can't see very good, but I could see that one. He just grabbed and tackled the guy who was blocking him, and that should be a holding penalty on the ninth play of the drive. And they talk it over. Well, Chambers was rolling to his right trying to avoid the pressure, and there's another flag down at the, about the 10-yard line. Okay. That's so. all by both teams holding offense number 84, holding defense number 20. I have the 84 right. I didn't have the defensive holding, but they'll offset, so it'll remain first down and 10 with the ball at the 17 of Dickinson State University. Well, let's take a look at the front line now. Number 92 into the ball game for Dickinson State. It's a number I don't have on my roster here. We'll take a look in a minute. Max Eaton. Okay, Eaton into the ball game. So Eaton into the contest for Dickinson State. All four new four people up there also. And on the carry inside the 17, inside the 15 to the 14. If that's a new running back for Valley City State, looks like number 20, and that's going into the ball game. So going into the ball game, and going will go for a pickup on the play of three, and it'll bring up again a third down or second down in about seven. So second and seven, going goes with that carry. Looks like Dylan Dahlgren also in in that defensive front. Valley City State 60 yards rushing in this football game. Shell Osborne at an outside linebacker. So second and seven at the 14 of Dickinson State. 9.45 left to play. Chambers is going to fire. He's got a man wide open in the end zone. Good coverage over there. Heimer coming up to bat it down. Do we have a penalty flag down? Oh, they're going to call pass interference against Dickinson State. Hmm. Well, I don't know. <laughs> First of all, it wasn't catchable. Second of all, Heimer was never touched the receiver that time. The receiver turned into him, but... They're going to call it pass interference, so it'll be first down Valley City, their 18th first down of the football game. Yeah, it looked like Heimer had good uh, coverage that time. I think the problem was is the ball was thrown to the inside and the receiver came back to the inside as Heimer was uh, on the inside of the coverage and just kind of, uh, I don't know if he even got tangled up with him, but I guess... Well, doesn't matter what we think. Well, the, re the thing is the receiver was between... Heimer and the official and what the official saw and what actually happened, maybe two different things. Yeah, we get the advantage of replay here, so it's pretty easy for us to take a look at it and see what it was. And Again, Chambers will come up, going to the line of scrimmage. There's the snap. There's the give. There's the carry, and about a yard short, the line of scrimmage of two. Going in, down to about the one-yard line, so we'll give him a pickup of one yard on the play. Second and goal for Valley, and again, 12th play of this drive for Valley City State. It'll be second and goal at the one. Nine minutes, 20 seconds, there's the quarterback sneak. I think he's into the, was it a sneak? Yep, 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 Valley City Chambers will take it in on the one-yard TD run, so Chambers in on the one yard. Touchdown run, and Valley City State makes it a 48 to 16 ball game with the PAT attempt upcoming. 12 plays and 75 yards for Valley City State as they move uh, the, uh, the uh, numbers on the Vikings visitor side of the scoreboard from 10 to 16, and Nielsen in to attempt the PAT. That score coming with 9.20 left in the football game. Chambers will do the honors. The hold in, there's the kick. Kick is up, and the kick is good. So Valley City State makes it a Dickinson State deficit, or a deficit to Dickinson State of 31 points. It's Dickinson State 48, Valley City State in the ball game at 17, and we have a total of 9.20 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Back with the Vikings kickoff in 30 seconds on KDIX and Consolidated Live. 
world-renowned YouTube chef Lamise O brings her authentic Caribbean cuisine to the Dickinson area. Island Cuisine is open in the St. Joe's Plaza with available takeout and dine-in options. You'll find their entire menu on Facebook or call 483-9918 to place a pickup order. Enjoy incredible dishes like brown stew chicken or everyone's favorite, Rasta Pasta. Call now to order or stop in. Island Cuisine, located in St. Joe's Plaza, Dickinson. Well, Valley City State, 12 plays, 75 yards, and uh, they score on the Chambers one-yard quarterback sneak, and that makes it with 9.20 left to go. Dickinson State, 48, Valley City State, 17, as we said. This fourth quarter has been all uh, backups for Dickinson State University, both offensively and defensively. Again, like last week against Waldorf, everybody getting a chance to play, and that's been the case today. There's a kickoff, high end over end kickoff. Brown's going to go back to the 5, and he'll bring it back to the 10, the 15, the 20, across the 20, 25, out across about the 28, maybe got to the 30-yard line. Let's see where he stepped There's out of bounds on the far sideline. On the return, Darion Brown. Darion Brown with the return. And they're going to say, do we have a flag down someplace? I don't know. Yeah, we do have a flag down there. Man, we've had a lot of flags here in the second half of this ball game. Dickinson State, again, led at halftime, 20-3. to They lead now 28 points. Valley City State scored 14. Now the flag is at the 25, and let's see what it is. Probably a hold or a legal block, I would suspect. Holding. Dickinson State, so... They'll tend back to the 15-yard line. The Blue Hawks will take over with 9-13 remaining to play. On the CHI, St. Alexia South scoreboard, Dickinson State again leading, and we're going to try and make sure we don't forget any names or numbers in this one. I want to see who's in it running back now. Grove, I believe, or do we have a new quarterback? Nope, that's still Bridger in a quarterback on senior day. There's the snap. There's the give. There's the carry. Left side out across the 15 to about the 19-yard line, and Let's see if we can get a number on that carry for Dickinson State. Nope. Let's see if they have Tangle. Santine. Okay, so Santine getting some running time here. Third, fourth running back for Dickinson State. A pickup of four. The Blue Hawks again today have rushed now for 136 yards. Have passed for 260 yards in this football game. Approaching 400 plus yards again. As they've been over that most of the season. Long count. There's the snap. Santine on the carry. Straight ahead again. Moves the pile. As he gets out to about the 23-yard line. Valley City State now putting some new folks in there also on the offense or defensive side of the football game. And it'll bring up a third and two for the Blue Hawks at their own 23-yard line. As we'll go probably just about under eight minutes by the time this ball is snapped. Alex Prouse, the Dickinson High product. And Stinson in at a wide receiver along with Prouse. Dickinson State leads again, 8-14, or with 8-14 remaining on the CHI St. Alexis South scoreboard, 48-17. to Another injured player on the field for Valley City State. Vikings have had about a half a dozen players down with injuries uh, throughout this ball game. And again, Dickinson Trinity wins this afternoon, 45-34 over Belva Drake Animus Garrison. And Ty Dossinger, a big afternoon, had 200 yards in total offense and four touchdowns. The Titans snap Belva's 24-game yeah, winning streak. That's what I thought it was. So it was a pretty impressive performance by Coach Orderman and the Titans this afternoon as they'll head to the Dakota Bowl. They'll get Kindred. Uh, Kindred held on, beat Langdon, Edmore, Munich, 34-32. The nine-man semifinals, South Border edges New Rockford, Cheyenne, 32-28. And North Prairie beat West Hope, Newburgh, Glenburn, 54-36. So North Prairie and South Border will match up in the nine-man championship game next week. Dumas, the injured player for Valley City State, so he goes off under his own power. Third down and two for Dickinson State. The ball at their own 23-yard line. Eight minutes remaining to play in this football game. Well, it seems like this second half has been oh. dragging on forever. <laughs> a lot of penalties, a lot of stoppages, a lot of scores. A lot of points, yeah. <laughs> a lot of things going on. A couple of three injuries. Yeah, with a quick first half and the Hawks led 20-3. to three. Grovem rolls out. He's looking to fire downfield. He's got a man wide open. That's going to be picked off by Valley City State. Good read by the defensive back and trying to get to the outside. Is number 38, and that'll be picked off that time by Kylie Tony, a defensive back out of St. Paul, Minnesota. 
as he comes up with the first interception and the Blue Hawks' first turnover. So turnover against Grobham, who had thrown only one pass, and that, of course, was for a touchdown in the ball game to Sickler. So he is one of two for 22, one touchdown, one interception, and Valley City State will get the football back, and they'll do so with seven and a half left to play. And again, it's a 48-17 lead for Dickinson State. Grobham was looking for Jackson Franklin, who was open on the right sideline, but the defensive back just jumped the route and came up with the interception and got a nice return inside the 30-yard line. So the Vikings with an opportunity to take advantage of a Blue Hawk turnover. Yeah, Dickinson State, uh, Grobham had all kinds of running room, only needed two yards, but elected to throw it. Chambers back the pass. Across the middle, they got a man wide open at the 10. And he'll be brought down inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. And that'll be a pickup of 19 yards on the play. And Chambers has come in. Of course, when you're down by 30-plus points, uh, it's a little easier when you're working against the second-team unit than the first-team unit. But Chambers, nonetheless, has done a nice job of throwing the football around this afternoon. Yoshino just came across the across the field. It, it came across the eyes of Chambers and put it right on the numbers. And a nice gain sets up the Vikings inside the 10 and a first and goal. 7 of 11 for 80 yards for Chambers. One touchdown. He's going to fire it again. Going down there, that's going to be incomplete. Coverage down there. Dickinson State again will set up second down and 10 for Valley City State at the 9-yard line of DSU. Cody Asbeck with the coverage for the Hawks. And Chambers just tried to put it up over the top of Asbeck but didn't have room to get it to the receiver. Well, Dickinson, uh, excuse me, Dickinson State has brought the D-line, some of the regulars back in, the linebackers and secondary all remain uh, backup players so Chambers will look at a second and goal at the 9-yard line he's going to run with it, trying to get to the outside, he's going to be hit and dropped for a loss on the play, number 35 coming up for Dickinson State, and that is Nate Nelson, Chris Favilla as we mentioned, some backups in there, Nelson one of them makes a nice play, and that'll be a loss from the 9 to the 11, a minus 2 on the play. Chris Foley listed as a senior out of Glendive, Montana, getting some playing time here late in the ball game. gets the tackle for a loss of a couple, and brings up a third down and goal from the tw from the 11 yard line. So third and goal from the 11, Valley under City. Six, under six and a half minutes left to go. Valley City just 58 yards rushing tonight in the ball game, the Hawks Set top 10 in the nation, giving up just 59 per ball game. So right about at their average. And Chambers on something of pass here. He does. There's the pressure. There's the fire. And that's overthrown. Not even close to anybody. So the pass goes incomplete. And he's now 7 of 13 for 80 yards and one touchdown in, in the ball game. The throw was just to the outside of the intended receiver in the end zone. And good coverage by the Hawks as uh, the Chambers didn't have anywhere to put the football and just Threw it up, hoping his defense or his offensive player could make a play, but couldn't, and brings up a third down and goal, or make it a fourth down and goal, and the Vikings will go for it with just over six minutes left here in quarter number four. 48 Dickinson State, 17 Valley City State. The Hawks led 20 to three at halftime and opened it up to a 38 point lead. There's pressure on Chambers. He fires. It's batted away. Good coverage downfield by Heimer. No interference on that one, and the Vikings will turn it over on downs, and Dickinson State will get the football back. Good coverage that time by Heimer to make another play. He's had a couple of nice plays here in the fourth quarter. One of the backup cornerbacks for the Hawks, another senior for Dickinson State uh, out of Red Lodge, Montana. Actually, excuse me, he's just a junior, but out of Red Lodge, Montana, the Vikings turn the ball over on downs with six minutes left. You know, the, the thing that's hard now with seniors is some of the seniors, I think Pete mentioned they have 16 seniors. I think several of them, about eight or nine, could come back and play if they wanted to next year. So they get that there. There's Brown on the carry, I think. Let's double check it for you and get a number there on the carry straight ahead. That might be Marley. Marley into the ball game. That was Marley. So Marley, a nice first down rush for Dickinson State from the 11. And he gets it out to about the 19. So that's an eight-yard pickup on the play. I know one of the guys that's listed as a senior is Braden Zuroff, but he, he's not in the picture with the seniors, so he'll be back next year for another year at the running back. Yeah, he has another year left. Here's the carry. This is Hunter, the quarterback out of Miles City, and he's got a first down. Carson Hunter goes from the 19 out to about the 28. And as we've said, all kinds of new players playing for both teams. That'll be a pickup of nine. The Hawks now 150 in the rushing department this afternoon, and again, they have gone over 400 yards in total offense in this football game. They average 
at 440 per game. So first and 10, that is first down number 24 for Dickinson State. They have the ball at the 28-yard line. Again on the carry, some room, breaking a tackle. Number 31, he's got some room at the 50, at the 40, all the way down to the 37-yard line. Is that Simonson? I yep. believe so, yeah, Simonson on the carry. So Simonson, a freshman, running back, goes from the 28, that's 22, and another 12. And that is a 34-yard run for Simonson. Freshman out of CMR, a great falls, and a nice run and a good job by the right side of that offensive line as they got a big hole for Simonson, and then he made a move to get about another 15, 16 yards, and the Blue Hawks back in Vikings territory. Again, Marley on the carry. He slips one tackle, cuts to the inside at the 35, and he's down at about, where did they finally get him down? About the 34-yard line, so he'll pick up about, uh, let's call it uh, four on the play for Marley. Santine's back in at the running back position. Xander Beeson, a sophomore out of Gillette, Wyoming, will come in at a tight end. Well, we need a calculator to keep track of everybody playing for Dickinson State in this fourth quarter, and now Valley City State in the last half of the fourth quarter. So to bring up a second and six at the 34. Again, Dickinson State just moments away from clinching at their ninth straight conference championship again on the carry. Aspect this time, who is oh, 22, excuse me. Okay, that's Santines. Okay, Santines will pick up some positive yardage, a five-yard pickup for Santines, and the Blue Hawks closing in on 200 yards rushing in this football game to go with over 260 yards passing in this football game. And almost an entire new offensive line coming out for <laughs> Dickinson State. Yeah, we got all kinds of new people checking out of the ball game. Evan Showalter, the Dickinson High product. Also checking out number 77, John Wetmore. Third down in a yard, high snap. <laughs> there's the handoff, there's the carry, and I think he got enough for first down yardage. That is Simonson again. We'll give him a pickup of a yard and let the officials decide if it was enough for first down yardage. I don't think we'll see the ball in the air ananymore in this football game. In fact, I'm sure Pete Stanton saying run clock so we can just take a couple of knees and get out of here. I think they're going to put him just about a half yard shy of a first down. Okay, so we'll call it fourth and one. So fourth and one for Dickinson State. Another shift change on the offensive line. <laughs> Well, 77 back in. That's John Wetmore comes back in. Number 58, I see. Will, William Rollins checks back in. So Justin Vila also in. Okay, so let's see what the Hawks do here. There's the snap. Hunter gets the handoff up, and they're not going to get it. They did not get first down yardage on the carry that time. Number 33. 23. 23, excuse me. Marley, and Marley did not. In fact, Marley will you lose a yard on the play. So to bring up a turnover on downs for Dickinson State with 2.15 remaining to play on the CHI St. Alexia South scoreboard. Valley City State will take over uh, with 2.16 left to go, trailing 48-17 to 17 to Dickinson State. Chase Selly checking in at a defensive back, the freshman out of Dickinson High. Well, you know, these freshmen can play a couple of games, so you know, I'm sure he's trying to get maybe everybody that's dressed today. Tate and, Weifrich in at a DB spot. Yeah, all kinds of new folks. They've played... I think Coach there said last week 29 players defensively, and uh, Dickinson State probably in that 30 degree or 30 player range defensively because they put them all in beginning the second half and only brought that defensive line back in for that one series, the last series for a little bit. That'll be a pickup of about two for Valley City State. The Vikings again have been limited just 60 yards rushing in this football game, just over 200 yards in total offense. So the Hawks again defensively have done a good job. Let's see who's in a quarterback. Is that Chambers staying in there? They yep. try to slide it to the outside, and they get a carry across the 35 to the 37-yard line. It'll be a pickup of five more yards on the play for Valley City State. Bennett Ferris in at a linebacking position. Also coming in, Tate Weefrich in on the tackle. Dawson Zuroff, the sophomore out of Beulah, in a linebacking position for Dickinson State. Who's number four in there? We got That's that, Chase Selly. That's Chase Selly. Okay, because we've got Colin Bowden in there also, so Selly checking in. Oh, you've got that program. I've got my old one pulled up. Okay. That's why we're getting the right numbers in there. So, Selly, I'm going to let Jim go with the right numbers here. And also my... in the linebacking position, Brett Stentoff out of Freud, Montana. There's a handoff again straight ahead. There's some room across the 45 out to about the 49 to the 50-yard line. That'll be a pickup of 13 on the play. And a first down for Valley City State 
That will be their 18th. They're making it yeah, 18th first down for the Vikings. So again, a pickup of 13. The Vikings have it at midfield with 52 seconds remaining to play on the CHI St. Alexia South scoreboard. Dickinson State will stay at 48. We'll see what Valley City gets to as they're going to bring their team up to the line of scrimmage here. And again, in a quarterback, number nine. And again, that is uh, Chambers, I do believe. Yep, so Chambers looking at quarterback as he has most of the second half. There's a snap. He'll take the knee, and that's going to do it. So that's going to be your final score here. Valley City State University and Dickinson State and the Blue Hawks for the ninth year in a row. Dickinson State University is your NSAA conference championship as they roll to a 48-17 victory over Valley City State. Got out to an early lead. Never looked back. Led 20-3 at halftime. They built that lead up uh, to uh, 41 to three and eventually settle in for a 48 to 17 victory over Valley City State today here at the back as Dickinson State will now go to eight and one overall conference play seven and oh they are the conference champs Valley City State will slip to six and three and five and two Dickinson State next week on the road to Madison to take on Dakota State Valley City State at home to take on Waldorf Iowa as Dickinson State wins it again today on the CHI St. Alexia South scoreboard. What a performance by the Blue Hawks on Booster Awards Day and Senior Day at the back. And the Hawks give the fans in the final home game a lot to be proud of and cheer about as they roll to a 48-17 victory. Let's take a timeout, a three-minute timeout, and we'll be back to number it all up for you and talk about another conference championship for the Blue Hawks. We'll do it right after this. Favorite thing about my street? My co-op. It isn't just about electricity. It's about power. The power of information. About safety. Efficiency. Technology. I am the co-op. I am the co-op. And the co-op is me. The Hub in North Dickinson is more than your ordinary convenience store. From Godfather's Pizza and the Hub Cafe to gourmet coffee, tea, and more. Stop by early for breakfast or grab something to go. We carry a variety of donuts that we make fresh every day. If your vehicle is dirty, we now have a state-of-the-art car wash at both locations. Stop in and see what we have to offer at the Hub located on North Highway 22 or the Hub West Dakota Oil on East Villard in Dickinson. We're changing the way people think about the convenience store industry. Clogged or slow moving drains are no match for Josh and his licensed techs at Unplugged Drain Cleaning of Dickinson. They provide 24 hour service to solve all your sewer problems. Using only the best equipment along with the latest drain camera technology to resolve issues while maintaining the integrity of your pipes. They take pride in thoroughly explaining your options, providing free estimates and great service, and making sure your issues are resolved permanently. Contact Unplugged Drain Cleaning at 701 290 9737 or online at unplugdrains.com. Western Cooperative Credit Union is your local loan headquarters. Thinking about a new car or truck, ATV, boat, or RV? We'll make the process quick and easy. Call us today. Western Cooperative Credit Union. 85 years the Western way. Western Cooperative Credit Union is dedicated to offering you the best financial services around. We're local, we're personal, and we're great at what we do for you. Join the herd. Western Cooperative Credit Union. 85 years the Western way. West Dakota Oil and Fitterer Oil Company proudly offers products and services that help fuel our customers' lives with clean burning propane and bulk fuel and convenient on-site delivery with premium farm and road fuels. We provide energy where and when you need it most with locations throughout Southwest North Dakota. West Dakota Oil and Fitterer Oil Company, locally owned, locally strong, the products you need with the service you deserve.
All right, back with you at the back. Again, a happy senior day, booster day here, and the team lined up down there on the field, getting the banner and the picture as Dickinson State wins it again, the ninth consecutive championship. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but let's hit the scoring summary for you. Hawks got going first possession. Braden Zuroff from 10 yards out. PAT kicked by Miller Good, 7 0. Andrew Nielsen hit a field goal at the 141 mark of the first quarter from 33 out to make it 7-3. And then the Hawks got rolling and never looked back. Will Madler to Noah Sickler, 13 yards. PAT attempt was a bad snap, not good, 13-3. Hawks got it back. Madler to Cam Shepard for 73 yards. And a touchdown PAT kick good, made it 20-3. That's the way we stood at halftime. And the Blue Hawks in the third quarter got it back after a turnover and Braden Zuroff. Rush for three yards out. The PAT kick good. Made it 27-3. Noah Chambers uh, had a pass intercepted by Jaden Hartwell. Returned at 40 yards for a touchdown. PAT by Miller Good. Made it 34-3. Nielsen hit a field goal uh, to make it 34 to, or a touchdown, excuse me. Chambers made it to Ampacope for 26 yards to make it a 34-10 uh, ball game after the PAT. Then Madler to Bowden for eight yards. The PAT good. That made it 41 to 10. Miller's attempt is good on the PAT. Grovem threw for 22 yards to Sickler, and that made it after the PAT 48 to 10. And then Thorsgaard from two yards out. Nilsson with the PAT 48 17 with 9.20 left to go. And that, my friends, was Dickinson State's and Valley City State's last scores of the ball game as it ended up again a final of 48 to uh, 17. Dickinson State with the victory. Again, the Hawks now on the year at 8-1 and one overall and 7-0 and oh in conference play. Valley City State, who was trying to wrestle at least a share of the conference away from Dickinson State, uh, they fall to 6-3 and 5-2. and, five and two. Let's look at the numbers team-wise. Dickinson State, 37 rushes for 203 yards. Valley City State, 29 for just 89. Passing yardage of Valley City State uh, between Thorsgaard and Chambers, 20 for 41. Uh, two interceptions, both thrown by uh, Thorsgaard, and of course uh, one return for a touchdown, 218 yards. Uh, Madler today just outstanding. Will today in the ball game, 15 for 21, 239 yards, three touchdowns, and Groven one for two, 22 yards and a touchdown. Combined, the Blue Hawks were 16 of 23 with the one interception thrown by Groven. He had a touchdown and three by Madler for touchdowns, four TDs, 261 yards. Dickinson State 60 plays, 400. And 64 yards in total offense for Dickinson. Valley City, 70 plays for 307 in the football game. Again, in the first down numbers, Dickinson State up there again, 26. Valley City State had 20 turnovers. Valley City State had a total of two turnovers, both interceptions. Dickinson State had a total of one inter one turnover. That was an interception. Uh, punting for Dickinson State. Groveham, one for a 40-yard average, four by uh, Valley City's Nielsen for a 31.2 in the punting department. The Blue Hawks 60% on third downs. Valley City State 50% in the football game. Individual numbers, we told you about Groveham and Madler in the passing department. Braden Zeroff almost 100 yards today. He's closing in on 1,000 yards now. 18 carries today, 94 yards, averaged over five yards a carry. Had a couple of touchdowns in the football game. Uh, Jackson Simonson, two carries for 34 yards in the football game. Darian Brown, four for 16. Will Madler had four for 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten guys carried the football. Dickinson State played a lot of people today, especially in the second half of this football game, midway through the third quarter into the fourth quarter. Receiving today, big day for Cam Shepard. Three catches, 91 yards. One of those a 73-yard touchdown pass. Noah Sickler had three catches for 41 yards and two touchdowns. Great game for Colin Bowden today. Five catches for 75 yards and a touchdown. Schumacher, Zuroff, along with Brown, each had one, and Brantley had two receptions for Dickinson State. Again, we mentioned Thorsgaard, 12 of 24 in the football game. He had an interception uh, for 97 yards total, and Chambers, 8 of 17. He had a touchdown and interception, 121. The leading rusher for Valley City State, Thorsgaard, 12 carries for 21 in the ball game today is the Hawks defensive rushing defense just outstanding again today. Receiving wise today, Deutsch, their leading receiver, one of their leading receivers, as uh, he had three catches for 44 yards. Uh, Yoshima had a nice game, seven for 75. And Ferris 
had a total of four catches for 55 yards. Sotomayor had three for 23 in the ball game for Dickinson or for Valley City State. University. Jim's got some defensive numbers to pass along. Well, for Valley City State, they were led in the ball game by Emmanuel Spye with four and Riley Gerhardt just five. We didn't say Gerhardt's no, name much at all as he had only five tackles. He was the uh, defensive player of the week last week with 20 tackles. Had just five this afternoon. Spye with four to lead Valley City State. For Dickinson State, they had a bunch of guys in on the ball game. Uh, Shell Osborne led the way or excuse me, uh, Nelson, uh, let's try again. Tell Lundy led the way with seven. Uh, Shell Osborne had five, had uh, one sack in the ball game. Matt Anderson and Austin Dennis combined for that. A lot of tackles for a loss. Fred Lundstrom had one and a half for a loss. Austin Dennis had a half a tackle for a loss. Matt Anderson, Shell Osborne, Riley O'Donnell each had a half tackle for a loss. Brooks Talbot had one and a half tackles for a loss. Uh, also, Nelson Chris Foley with a tackle for a loss. Jaden Hartwell had an interception and returned that for a touchdown. Tell Lundy had the other interception in the ball game. But boy, let's see: one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 23 different defensive players had at least one tackle in the ball game. So a lot of defensive players in on the ball game today as uh, the seniors all got a chance to get some playing time this afternoon. Those second and third stringers also got out on the field. I would suspect just about everybody that was dressed was able to get out on the field as the Blue Hawks built a big lead in the second half with those two turnovers. Uh, Tell Lundy got the interception on the first possession of the third quarter and they were able to go in and score and then Hartwell had the 40 yard interception return uh, for a touchdown and the defense opened things up and that allowed the Blue Hawks to get a lot of players in on the uh, ball game and give it the uh, 48 to 17 performance just an impressive ball game for Dickinson State I believe only had to punt one one or two times, so it was an impressive performance for the Blue Hawks, uh, both offensively and defensively, and of course that offensive line just had a great game today. Uh, didn't uh, let uh, uh, the quarterbacks, uh, either Madler or Grovem, get to any pressure, and it really had a good performance, opening up some holes for the running game. Azuroff had another big ball game. Also, uh, uh, in the contest, the uh, uh, Brown had a good ball game running the football. You know, they just ran and ran and ran, and a bunch of different guys got the opportunity to run the football this afternoon, and just an impressive game all around for Dickinson State. Maybe the one hiccup, the bad snap on the second uh, touchdown, and weren't able to get the score, but uh, Dickinson State just an impressive performance this afternoon. Uh, they extend their conference winning streak to 32 they have not lost a game in over four years. Their last loss, Valley City State got them by one back in 2019. Waldorf beat them by one in 2018. So the Blue Hawks have put together an outstanding run, winning 32 in a row. 32 in a row in the conference. In conference play. Uh, this year, 7-0. and Last year, 6-0. and 2021, 8-0. 2020, 9-0. 6-1 in 2019 and 18. 8-0 and in 2017. Uh, 6-0 and in 2016, 5 and 1. They were the runner-up in 2000, or won it in 2015 at 5-1. and Were the runner-up to Valley City State in 2014 at 5 and 1. They've won 32 in a row in conference play, wow. and since joining the North Star in 2014, Dickinson State is 65 and 4. Wow. They have only lost four games since 2014. They've lost to Valley City State twice. They lost to Waldorf once, and they lost to Dakota State once. So that's an impressive 10-year uh, run since joining the North Star Conference. And, of course, the, the win today gets them the uh, conference championship, also secures the uh, postseason berth as well. And, of course, well, I don't think we've mentioned it much that they extended the uh, playoff field from 16 to 20. Yeah. So there will be... Eight teams playing in the first weekend. The top 12 teams will get a bye. get a first round bye, and then 13 to 20 will play first round games. So if Dickinson State right now ranked number 18, if they can win out, win Dakota State next week, possibly sneak into that 16-15 spot, we possibly, and I'm saying possibly, <laughs> could have the first ever home playoff game at the Bijou Activity Center. Yeah. And 
You saw the crowd that we had for homecoming this year. If you get a home playoff game, can you imagine what this place will look like? It'll be pretty full, I bet. And, uh, you know, that homecoming, they set a record for attendance. They set uh, just an outstanding uh, day for the Blue Hawks at homecoming. Of course, they had that Blue Hawk uh, football homecoming for the uh, football team and had over 100 kids, or 100 guys, I shouldn't call them kids, but it had 100-plus guys back for that. So if you can... See the Blue Hawks winning out, get the win down in Madison next week. Maybe sneak into that 16-15 uh, in a couple of weeks. We could be back here at the Bijou Activity Center for a first-round game. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Of course, uh, some things have to happen, but you would suspect some of the teams playing each other. And again, a salute to all the seniors today, 16 of them. And uh, again, we're going to take a quick break here from ND Pharmacy, and then we'll come back with our player of the game. We'll do it for you right after this. Rivera's more than a bank. We're a group of people in the business of helping communities forge on. At the counter, we offer convenience so the day can forge on. In the thick of the hall, we protect your peace of mind so the season can forge on. And around the table, we make room for everyone so life can forge on. We're more than a bank. We're your path ahead. Rivera, forge your path. Tristan, great job. Tristan Sturr back at the studio and Mike Renner today with the Valva Trinity game. Tristan and Mike together and here Tristan finishing it off. Our seniors are players of the game today. Bridger Grovem, Caden Kuntz, Noah Sickler, Cam Shepard, Brock Jones, Nelson Crisovilli, Cal Lundy, Nathan Schumacher, Jack Woods, Brady Santines, Tyson Crane, Cody Asbeck, Maddox Fusti, Alex Sprouse, Crew Madron, and Austin Dennis. All players of the game, they get a chance, folks. I encourage you to stop down to the Eagles tonight. Probably about, a, well, let's see what time it is. About 5 o'clock, about 6 o'clock. Uh, so a social hour of the ceremony, I think they scheduled for 6.30. So we'll have that for you. Uh, again, they'll have that there. And they'll honor the Booster Award winners today at that event also. And that is uh, Steve Kleinian, Outstanding Achievement Award winner. Nick Stevenson, Honorary Letterman Award winner. Mandy Erickson Loyalty Award winner. So we encourage you to take that in. About a 45-minute to 60-minute ceremony tonight at the Eagles beginning. Uh, probably the social about 6, the ceremony around 6.30, Jim. And, of course, uh, of those seniors, there's four Dickinson kids, yeah. two from Dickinson Trinity, two from Dickinson High. Always great to see the Midgets and Titans come to Dickinson State and enjoy some success on the field. And uh, that's what we had this season was uh, the four seniors uh, for Dickinson High and Dickinson Trinity having solid performances as the Blue Hawks win their ninth straight conference title, extend that winning streak in North Star play to 32 in a row. All right, that does it. Great day for football in Dickinson, Dickinson Trinity. On to the Fargo Dome Friday to face Kindred, 45-34. John Olderman and crew on the way home. Boy, they deserve a big pat on the back and congratulations. They go to 12-0. They'll face 12-0 Kindred. Dickinson State remains unbeaten in conference play. Ramp up their ninth in a row. Impressive at the back today and a beautiful Saturday afternoon in November, 48-17. For Tristan Sturr, for Mike Renner, for our sponsors, along with Jim Dahl, I'm Rod Klein. And until next time, have a great weekend. Don't forget to turn those clocks back one hour tonight before you go to bed. And so long, everyone, from the Bijou Activity Center, where the conference champions reign again for the ninth straight year. Dickinson State over Valley City State, 48-17. So long.